Hello, welcome to Free Will Science and Religion. Science and Religion. I'm Chandler Clegg, and I'm here with Poffo, Michael Walsh, Logan Meyer, Jamie Soden, George Ortega, WSD, uh, Trick Slattery, and Quaid. We have a really big crowd today, and we were going to be talking about why it's important to understand that we don't have free will in many contexts, both on a personal level and both on a political, what, social level as well. And since there's a lot of people who have a lot to say, um, I'd like to ask who would like to go first with what they have to say about this. Well, I'm, I guess I'm the, I'm the newbie, so I guess it's more like for my sake and understanding it. So I, the, the question kind of to reiterate would be, if the myth is dispelled, um, how would it how would it really have a significant um, impact on our culture, and and do people even think about this stuff? Like in a sense that that um, changing the way they think about this would actually uh, create an impact. Um, you know. All right, let me, let me start just, out. Um, yeah. Basically, it would make blaming other people or ourselves for anything. Illogical. I mean, blaming in the sense of like attributing fundamental responsibility to others and ourselves impossible. And but you know, but George, people people aren't logical to begin with. They don't they don't do things based on logic anyway. So yeah, would it matter? Let me finish. Let me finish. That All was right, go ahead. about to address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people don't think about this, right? But there was a time when people didn't think about freedom or democracy or 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 government. So yeah, fine. Okay. Sure. People are way behind the curve, but that doesn't mean that that a society doesn't, you know, can't change or actually doesn't need to change. Yeah, and, and people do right. care that that they're being illogical. They just think they're being logical when they're not. So so yeah. it, it's not that people don't care. Like if they actually understood that they were, you know, were being illogical, they would care about that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think yeah. I think a lot of people would anyway. Not not everybody. It's I guess I guess what I'm trying to say. I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, I I don't think that um that people function uh, generally based on you know based rational on rational thinking and logic to begin with. And so this this the um it makes perfect sense to you and to us. But what I'm saying is like uh, to them, it's like they're not they're not operating on this kind of higher level of of uh, oh, no, no. thinking uh, to begin with. All right, yeah. 100, 150 like, years after Darwin proposed evolution, here in the United States, still about 50% of our population won't accept it. So yeah, yeah. granted, there's a lot of people <laughs> who are gonna cling to their beliefs because they need to, but in order to change society, to change government, to take, change the structure of civilization, all we need is really about to, to change like 30, 40% who are the top, you know, the intellectuals, the government leaders, the rest will follow, at least, you know, through law and government. And this is important, by the way, to the, the idea of free will, because if, if you believe that these people are products of environment, then you believe that manipulating their wills becomes a matter of manipulating the environment that they're either raised in or are surrounded by. So if you really, if you want the culture to change, in the same way that, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier, it's about strategy. You have to ask, like, what pieces do I have to move in order to cultivate this mindset where people recognize this thing? It, I know it's, it's not as, it's easier said than done, but that is the, that is the, the basic boil, that's what it comes to when you boil the concept down. But just to also go off the whole, like, rational rationality thing and logic, I think it's also too important to recognize that, like, Rationality isn't something that you have or not. It's a gradient, and everybody does it to degrees. Okay, so it's not it's not trying to get people like get on board with rationality. It's it's making sure that they understand the rules of logic. Like, how many in here can know, like know every logical fallacy? Like everyone. Like, right. I know a couple. I know I know a few. <laughs> but, right, right. Not all of them. Not all of them. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. I'm sure we know a lot, but but I'm sure we have to probably look up the names of a few of them. I mean, we know we, we probably know that there. Oh, this was a fallacy, but we were like, what is the name of that fallacy, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. There's, over, there's over 300 of them. There's just right. so yeah. many of them, and we all probably understand them on some level to some degree. And so it really becomes about trying to make sure that they understand some of those basic fundamental rules and some of them do by the way like this is like people have said before like um some smart people like one of the phrases is 
trying to reason with somebody who has brushed off reason. That was Thomas Paine. Um, is like administering medicine to the dead. And then, you know, uh, Sam Harris has said, if what, you know, if people don't value logic, what logical argument are you going to give them that's going to make I, them I, value logic? Yeah. I think but that's my, where I'm coming from, that, that point right okay. there, like Sam yeah, thinking. Yeah, my response to that, though, is that people do, though. When, people, when, when somebody, instead of leaving their house from, like, their second floor, the second story of their house, and they leave by the door, that is some level of logic. That's some right. level of of reason. And, and even <laughs> even even on a psychological state, there's there's this whole thing of cognitive cognitive ah, cognitive dissonance that happens when people have two contradictory views and they understand their contradiction. There, there's a contradiction there between their two yeah. views that they hold. They have this dissonance that happens, and 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 it, it it's really psychologically problematic for people. So yep. so it, it's not just the fact that they might be illogical, but but. Of, there's also the psychological component of being illogical that plays into it. I yeah. think that I, I don't think that people as a whole are, are just ethical enough, are concerned enough about ethics. I think people are trying to just get by. They're just they're just trying to either occupy and entertain themselves and they're you know they're trying to make ends meet. They're just they're just working, 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 trying to provide for themselves, trying to provide for fa their families and then and then their downtime they just escape with drugs and alcohol and, and entertainment. And yeah. that's what I'm trying to say is I think fundamentally because of the way our society is structured, <clears throat> um, this is not a priority. Like ethics and morality is not a priority unless it's in, among the religious communities and then it's all you know twisted with all kinds of mythology and, and you know false doctrine and all kinds of bullshit. So they're, they're focused on ethics and morality but they're also you know believing in um, talking snakes and so then, the, the, so then the sun is stand still. I, I agree with you, but you know we're moving into an era. We're already in it, where for the survival of the civilization, we have to pretty much convince them or persuade them to value logic far more than they do. I mean, like if they want to stick to the the biblical and understanding of reality, there is no way we're going to get have enough support to to challenge climate change. So in other words, yep, like. That's yeah. You know, while in the past, it would, in the past, it would have been nice for people to be more logical, but it wasn't absolutely necessary. We've gone into an era where, yes, it's absolutely necessary. Where a vast m many more people adhere to logic than to religion. But that's what think, I'm saying. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I also think there's a progression that's happening. I mean, we're we're in the in, uh, we're just the, 20 years ago is when we have high speed internet first come into. Like it was just just been 20 years, right? Out of all of human history, 20 years, and we have the internet now, and and now people are have have access to information. So people are just beginning to get the access to information that they didn't have before, and 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 things are changing because of that. You have more atheists, for example, than than you had yeah. in the past yeah. because because <clears throat> people have the information. So 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 it's it's a really a I big agree. thing yeah. that we have this information age that that's coming to. You know, past more and, more skepticism, and, more logic, more logical thinking, more critical thinking. Yeah, absolutely. There's more, there's more compassion. There's there's movements like the vegan movement that are that are com entirely based on compassion. Um, we got we got to understand much... how recent this is. This is actually a yeah. very recent occurrence. Yeah. Now I have a thing. question for Pafo, if you guys don't mind. Now I think sure. that Pafo is <clears throat> is right that the majority of people still at this point are not ethically driven or logically <laughs> driven. And yet, Poffo, when you try to present pantheism to somebody, there's how would you go about it? And whatever method works for that could work for other things too. You're breaking up a little bit, so I couldn't exactly hear you. Okay. But I think you're asking, um, could I how use the same method methodology? Say that again. Yeah, whatever methodology you use when you present the ethics-based system of pantheism and all that, like if you, whatever method works for that or any other issue can also work in other areas to motivate people to be logical and ethical somehow. Right, uh, I agree. And that those methods are based on science, based on observation, uh, our biology, um, our, our shared interest in, um, you know, in, in the like preserving the biosphere, uh, you know, it, it's it all goes back to observable reality and and what people's basic genuine needs are and like meeting those needs. 
so so basically we're we're kind of we're kind of moved away from the topic into into the more the basic topic that of of you know epistemology and and people um just the base structure of people critically thinking basically so so yeah and that and that is a problem um but we're but saying that once trick, trick this is important because the reason many people continue to cling to free will belief is they don't understand the benefits of, right. of, of overcoming it. And so this, these benefits are part of the logic that they need to accept. In other words, you're right. People are driven by the drive to seek pleasure and avoid pain. So their logic is going to be molded by that. So we have to appeal to that basic biological drive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Appealing to both of them, I think, is the best. You could appeal to both the logic of why we don't have free will and at the same time the you know the reasoning behind why it's a better situation yeah and a lot of this is it's rhetoric it's you if you want you have to there are certain people out there the, the way they speak the way that they present themselves the way that they dress for whatever reason it attracts a large number of people and unfortunately these people in, in a lot of circumstances are irresponsible not very, not not necessarily inclined towards intellectualism, and they end up proliferating very bad ideas. So, like, what it comes down to for me, and the reason that I got my degree and the thing that I did was, I'm trying to figure out what is that thing? What are those those components that make up a convincing persona? And I think that's really, if we if we want to convince the main populace of things, that needs to be the goal: is this idea of rhetoric. Like, I think that's I a great that's a great so, point. I. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Was that all of this is just like jargon? It's it's intellectualism. It's it's philosophical nonsense to, to most people. What most people are drawn to and attracted to, what most people resonate with, are things that make them feel, things that excite them, things that turn them on, things that um that represent um, meeting their needs. What we're really talking about is where their focus is, where their priorities are, and that's what I'm kind of saying is that the, this yeah. is not where most people's priorities are. Most people's priorities are on pleasure, entertainment, and, and meeting their material needs. Yeah, right, you've got, you, you got to recognize this movement is relatively new. I mean, like, over the last yeah. five years or so, it's finally come out of academia, somewhat into the mainstream. And so, you know, it's we're not yet at the point where we're actually targeting the general general population. We still need okay. to get the intellectuals, the academics and the politicians to, to understand this. Once once the people who have the capacity, or at least more of the capacity, to get this logically, scientifically, then we shift over to the, the public relations for the for the general, you know, population. Okay. I mean I'm all for it. if you're if you just want to have a philosophical conversation about that, I'm I'm gung ho. And um that's that makes perfect sense. Like I thought this was like you were really trying to implement implement this and I'm like why are we even trying to convince politicians of anything? They, they don't give a shit. They're not going to care. They care about the money in their pockets. They care about keeping their families secure. You know, they, they don't care about the general public. I don't I don't care what they say. Well, it's all let's, lip service. Say, let's say they care about their grandchildren and great grandchildren. So we, we've done episodes how, like, for example, yeah, but they don't. Hold on. The, the, uh, <laughs> the scientists are telling people, the scientists are telling, well, and, and if they don't, then we're screwed, you know. So, like, you know, we just have to, like, hope that they, they care because, like, for example, um, the scientists are telling people, you know, you, you know, and, and people are saying of their free will, you have your free will are behaving so immorally that civilization could collapse in a hundred years because of climate change, okay? And so like in psychology, there's such a thing as denial. People will deny what they can't psychologically accept or is a threat to their self-image, their self-identity. So, so this isn't really this isn't just really about the, the self-interest of, of politicians aside from this free will issue. If we don't get, I mean like, if, if this free will based denial is, is um, responsible for, say, even 20 percent of the climate change denial, you know, one fifth of it, that's substantial. Um, you know, I think it, I think it should be taught. I think I think books should be written about it. I think uh, there should be media presentations. I think we should make you should make documentaries. You should make YouTube videos. Absolutely. You should put the idea out there. Educate. Make people aware. Right. And the yeah. other part is that, like, you know, we're moving into an era where things that aren't very fortunate are going to start happening to everyone. 
and like under the free will paradigm, everyone is going to be blaming everyone else. So it'd be nice if we could kind of like transition to a much more civil, intelligent kind of like a mindset, you know, to be able to navigate that new um, new arena we're going to be under in. The, under, the primate, under the primate paradigm, that's why they're blaming everybody because we're, we're still primitive. We're, we're, not, we're not evolving in, our, in terms of our, our ethics and our morality and our, you know, we're not generally thinking philosophical people. The best of us are, and there are many, you know, among us, but overall, in general, I'm, like I've said, I'm very um, pessimistic about society yeah. in general. And that's, why, that's, that's, why, that's, why can... will, that's why this free will issue is so important, because if our morality is based on a myth, a complete misunderstanding of why we're doing things, then we can't change that mor morality without overcoming the myth. But in a lot of ways, we have progressed. Like, like we no longer have slavery and all that other stuff. You know, we, we understand these things that in the past were okay and they're not okay today. So we are we are progressing. I, I, I agree with you. I agree. We, we absolutely are further along now than we were, you know, 150 years ago. I mean, you know, we're, we're, there's less discrimination. We, gays and lesbians have more rights. Um, animals have more rights. Children have more rights. Um, equality is on the rise. Much more, um, you know, ecologically friendly products come out. Um, much more health conscious. Much more environmentally conscious. I, I don't know. Maybe I should, I should specify um, my statements. I believe that human beings overall are evolving and progressing. I don't believe that. I, I mean that on an evolutionary, on an evolutionary level. In a societal level, I I don't see I don't see hope for our society at large. I see hope in the individuals and in the individual movements, like in the in the um, the higher altruistic um, sort of uh, character that that develops and, and rises up from amidst all this chaos and crap. You know. I have a question uh, to anybody that can answer this. Um, we're talking about free will uh, or the lack of and the effects it has. But my question is, who is our main target audience in regards to free will being an illusion? Like, who is the, who's the main populace of people that we're trying to reach out to? Because obviously nope. politicians is a no-go because I think everybody agrees that they're corrupt. Um, so... Can we try Just to reach Logan, at this point, it's anyone who can understand. You know, a person yeah. has to be, you know, objective enough and intelligent enough and scientific enough to understand this. That's basically our audience. I, yeah. I think the biggest yeah. audience is, is young people, basically. Yeah, is, 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 yeah. Okay. People that are heard me say that, but yeah. Okay. Ways, I mean. we're, we're all different. We have our own social group, so our target audience can be whoever we are inclined to speak to or appeal to. Like, for me... Uh, some people might not be interested in talking to Christians. I am. Pofo made a, a point, which I think is is valid, when he was talking about you have these, this large this large population of people who don't care, right? They don't care to think about these things. But Christians, there are some out there that actually do care. They yeah. actually care to think about, and I, that what that's what makes me want to speak to Christians more. Because oh, there's more there's millions there's millions of uh, of religious people who are are who are totally focused on. Developing their character on, on goodness and righteousness and, yeah. and being the best exactly. that they can be. Um, they're just doing it for all the wrong reasons and, exactly. you know, they're completely misled. But uh, th their focus, that's the thing about spirituality. The focus is on um, on the, the betterment of society, even if it's even if it's a society that's going to get taken off the earth in the rapture or whatever. It's, it's still a, the focus is in the right place. Um, it, it just needs to be brought to reality where, you know. Like we're all in this together. Uh, there is no afterlife. There is no kingdom come. Like you're waiting for for a paradise that's never going to get here. If you want heaven, you got to create it. You got to you got to build it. You got to design it. We have to design our society, um, you know, uh, based on on morals and values and ethics. Not not like wait for uh, a divine being to come rescue us from everything. Yeah, yeah, but that is like that like. It, to me, it might be, at least in my perspective, I'm not saying I'm right about this, but it, it would be easier to get someone who's already passionate and in trying to, and taking things seriously, so to speak, than talking to sure. people who care and sure. don't want to take it seriously. Okay, so how would you how would you address that? Because, okay, so let's take uh, Christianity, most basic example. 
Um, that is, that's a that's a fundamental thing, man. Is that we, we have free will, and and that's that's so because God won't love like he doesn't want to force his love on us, so we have to we can choose to accept or reject him. That's like a huge thing. Um, so how do you how do you just curious how do you tackle that? How do you approach that? Like, um, that, oh, well, there's that, several. Yeah, I mean, there's several different ways. Like, well, like I said, the whole rhetoric concept. Like, there's there's things that appeal to Christians, and whether or not they want to admit it. A guy wears like, why does their pastor wear suits every week? You know, it's clear that there there there's something about the uh, the look of a person, the way that they speak, the intonations of their voice. But then on top of that, the, the concept intermingled that they really do have their own. They understand reason and logic to some degree, and to start with like axioms, like basic premises that they agree on, and build from there. I think you can get to the truth. The, the I think you can get to the truth of things. The reality of things by these axioms it's just they haven't they haven't messed with them enough they haven't they're not um seeing the conflict because a lot of times there's a, there's huge conflicts between these axioms that they hold that just aren't being presented to them that are like don't you see these two things are in opposition you know or or your behavior here is opposing with what you're saying is an axiom like things like that i do have another question uh in regards to the lack of free will, um, how do you guys go about um, getting people interested in the topic of free will? Like yesterday, I did a Periscope uh, in regards to free will. I put the title as "What is? Uh, do we have free will?" And I had a couple people on and off that were uh, engaged with me in debate and such. And I started to sh convince a few people of uh, the fact that we don't have a free will, but others were pretty head stubborn i guess on it uh, i was just curious how do you guys broach the approach the subject of free will with people and get them interested i i blog i i do social media facebook and all that stuff and i write book a book i wrote a book mm -hmm. so that's how i did logan what i do is like to be uh, near manhattan so i created a, a meetup in manhattan you know uh based it there and there are like 22 million people in the New York metropolitan area. Naturally, not all of them belong to Meetup, but a lot of people surf through the, um, the Meetup for group, groups to join. And so like the, the name of that group is Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. And then my friend Nick and I, and a few of us, others of us, uh, Mitch also now, um, we for the last one we just have a TV show based in Manhattan, Manhattan Cable. So, like, in other words, if somebody's scrolling through the TV, uh, the, um, the um, are like, are like you know, a couple of channels away from our, our, you know, fortunately from our, our, our show, Free Will. And so we're going to get an hour. So a lot of this is just putting the, you know, uh, the refutation out there to get people to at least think about it and talk about it. Then the next step is like, you know, whether they're interested enough to like read a, a magazine article, a book, you know, things like that. Okay. No, that, that sounds great. It's just like, cause a person like me, I live in Houston, Texas, a highly, highly religious area of the United States. And it's kind of difficult to talk to religious people about the concept of free will because when I mention free will, they think, oh, I'm talking about, about God, anything? destination. <laughs> no, well, yeah, but I'm talking about in the concept of free will, it, it's, it's hard to talk to them because you mentioned free will and they think, oh, you're talking about God and predestination. Here's how I understand mm -hmm. it. And I'm like, no, I'm talking yeah. about determinism. Um, yeah. And the scientific aspect of it, not the theological aspect to it. Everything's through the filter. They have these filters, you know, so everything's going to going to get distorted yeah though you can get, go, get into the whole you know omniscient god and why that's incompatible with free will as well so, yeah. i have actually i have i did that uh with my uh youngest yeah, brother and i got him to kind of question it so yeah and the fact that christians used to, a lot of them used to be determinists at one point i mean martin luther was a determinist did not believe in free will true true martin and, luther and, john edwards uh right right yeah others. So, John and Calvin. You can, you can even like appeal to certain biblical texts, like when, when Jesus says, "Like, give them <laughs> appeal to authority." Yeah. Appeal to authority. <laughs> it's yeah, a valid yeah. authority according to them. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. What I don't care. Like I'm completely fine yeah. with these policies as long as it convinces them. But the <laughs> point the point is that like you know forgiving what they or you know 
forgive them what they know not what they do stuff like that that you can kind of like use the text to show them that if ah, they can have I never thought of that yeah it's, it's a verse yeah they can be more compassionate with the idea of free will if they believe this god is this transcendent concept that is all loving there's nothing more all loving than to say people are we should not be blaming people for the way they are we should we should Probably. be helping Logan, but wait a minute, or, or Quaid, rather. Um, the problem, our, our huge problem, is um, once we convince them that um, that we're not responsible for the evil we do, that Hitler did, that all, you know, these atrocities, then, you know, in their mind, well, God must be responsible. And so that that's, that's a really, really tough um you know, uh, challenge before us. The, the, the only way I can think of doing it, and it's not completely satisfied, um, satisfactory, is to point out that this causal chain um, that regresses back in time eternally never stops going back. So in, essentially, logically, you can absolve even God of this evil, but, you know, it's not completely satisfactory because then you can't really claim that God is good either. So... Yeah, that's, that's a really good I mean, point. This is the Epicurean yeah. paradox. Yeah, and it goes, it, like that's but that's why they have the devil. That's why they invented the devil. Basically, is they originally Every the Jews well. originally had had um, God responsible for both good and evil, and then it, it evolved over time, and then the devil became the scapegoat for for evil, the devil and and free will, like our own choice. You know, he influences, and we we go along with it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah that is a good point. Uh, but yeah. you could also say that like maybe. If we would have to change the concept of God, but like maybe God wants us to forgive him. Like maybe he wants us to, in the same way that we absolve each other, you know, of our <laughs> own errors, maybe God just wants us to understand him and be like, look, guys, I didn't know what I was doing. And Or, you know, or maybe, or maybe, and this is where I come in, maybe God <laughs> is evolving. Maybe God is actually evolving and God is learning what is good and what is bad. And actually, you know, since you know, nature is really uh, our our origin, and we, we're all we all came from nature, and we're all products of nature. Maybe nature itself is developing morality, so you can forgive God, you can give it a break because God's not perfected yet. God is is actually evolving and becoming conscious and and learning what right and wrong is through us. The, the problem is most religious people yeah. think that God is perfect, or they want their God to be exactly. perfect. Yeah, and, and yeah. 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 all knowing, all powerful. You know, absolutely. I, I've, I've written, I have a whole chapter about this in my book. Like, it's exactly what I, what I said that people have these idealized notions of what um, the creator deity is. They've already personified it in their minds. They've already created an ideal and a standard that they have, you know, that then everything has to fit. And then, well, God can't be responsible for evil, so there must be a devil. And then, although we have free will, so that we can we make our choices, it's our own fault. No, God doesn't send anyone to hell, people send themselves to hell, right? See, this is why I call God an asshole. If you're going to get you more this powerful, I'm going to keep calling him that. I'm sorry. Don't I'm say offended. it to the religious person. Don't say it to the religious person. I mean, it, it doesn't I'm mean I'm to offended. us. You shouldn't I say that. all the time. We know we know that he doesn't exist, <laughs> but I, I could definitely say the character outlined in the Old Testament and, and the New Testament is a complete uh, narcissistic, you know, megalomania, maniac uh you know, uh, the insecure. Dawkins quote. <laughs> the, the, the Dawkins quote of like 50 uh, yeah. Yeah, pejoratives. I love He's that. He's definitely, a, the God of the Bible is definitely a genocidal maniac, as I like to call him when I mm -hmm. talk to people about him. Or, or, or it's just the, you know, these, these, um, this mentality of these kind of bigoted, chauvinistic, um, you know, uh, tri this tribalistic men who, who you know, cop copied the stories and wrote them down. And that's the, that's the culture they lived in because they were less evolved at that time. Basically, yeah. God is like Donald Trump, except he kills people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, God, was God is whatever. To understand the world, wasn't it? But it was a failed yeah. understanding of the world. God is God is whatever. If you if you have a God, it's it's literally just a reflection of your culture. And so, the pantheist God is is literally it's a nature. reflection of, of the intelligence. Uh, yeah, the, the intelligence and the awareness of um of the entire scope of. Of the, of the the human spectrum of knowledge, which it doesn't get any bigger than the universe, doesn't get any bigger than nature, it doesn't get any more, um, what's the what's the word, uh, you know, does, like like not showing favoritism. I mean that the natural world uh, has no morality. It, it everything is just 
neutral and we, we, we bring to it, you know, our, our morality and our ethics and our values as, as animals and life forms evolve, we develop morality. So that's where morality comes from. Um, we definitely it, should have a, have another emerging. topic discussion on pantheism at some point. Cause I'm yeah, an atheist I still, and, I, and I, I see I pantheism as, I see pantheism as kind of like, uh, compatibilism is it's kind of a, a definition that we really should avoid, but I know you and George probably disagree with me. So I think I think another discussion on that might. I would. Be. I mean, I'd love to. I could comment, you know, quickly if you don't want to get too much into it. But what do you mean by that compatibilism? What, what, can you uh, find you know, what, you know what free will compatibilism is? Is people who basically free will as something compatible with determinism. So so it's it's more of like a redefinition of free will to be compatible. So relate that relate that to pantheism, and your your view of pantheism says what exactly? That that the term God should be abandoned just as just as much as free will. Basically, I, I agree with you. I agree. Uh, I only I only use it in in certain contexts and and to make a certain point. But um, God, as we know it, um, you know, a personal anthropomorphic, um, you know, separate entity that intervenes and and uh, literally is, is separate from the universe does not exist. I like the, the, the right. term God. Should oh, be yeah, and I understand that's what the pantheist thinks. Yeah. But the problem is that they'll still use the term God to mean something else, like as the universe or the the whole. I don't. World. I don't. I don't use the word. I don't use the word God. I use the word omnia. I use the word omnia, or I say nature, or I say the universe, um, or the life oh, okay. principle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I in, in my groups. I mean, I the, who know they know where I'm coming from. So I mean, we can we can reference it. And we can talk about it like that just for emphasis. But um, as I said, we need to throw out the the, the you know, the old definition of God and update Actually, our definition of nature. And I wouldn't call that pantheism. I'm a pantheist, and I, I use the word God for for one reason specifically. <laughs> well, for a couple of reasons. First is, like, if God is defined as everything and what controls everything, then the term God preceded the term universe, which is also <laughs> defined as what is everything and controls everything. But more importantly to me <laughs> is, like, we distinguish in our lives between persons and things. In other words, we are people, we ascribe personality, you know, personhood to ourselves and each other, and then we ascribe thingness to everything else. So in other words, like, I would, I would prefer to see the universe as a being rather than as a, as a, as a thing. And so that God preserves that personhood for the whole of reality. I, I can I can understand that and and I could also I could also see how it could be confusing to others. Um, what was the last thing you said? Um, I, I don't know who I don't know anybody's names. Oh, it was uh, just, I, I don't know. I I, I Michael, Michael, here. Michael, but you you just mentioned something, but I was I was about to answer, but I can't remember now. Who me or Michael? I'm tricked. Uh, Logan? Was it Logan? Probably <laughs> not, because I oh. didn't mention pantheism. I don't even personally care about pantheism. I think it's cool, but yeah. I don't entertain well, it. Well, let me just comment on uh, let me just comment on George's pantheism. It does seem like he's doing what Trick said, which is a kind of compatibilistic move, in that you seem to be redefining God as something that it is not traditionally thought of in the same way that compatibilists are redefining free will in a way that it's not traditionally thought of. Well, the, sure. the, the earliest definitions <laughs> of God were that God is everything, that God controls everything. That's not a redefinition. The, well, you, the, can the, argue, you can actually argue that the definition that of God, according like to pantheism, is uh, traditional because it's been around for a long time. The definition of God, in a general sense, is a, a being that is right. omniscient, um, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, omnibenevolent, and eternal. And... I can actually demonstrate point by point how nature fulfills those requirements, completely fulfills that criteria, except omnibenevolence, and yet it is an emergent this property. Is we, it's an emergent property of the universe. Well, Papa, this is why you know, we need to have this Bible, discussion and another, yeah. another podcast. Bible in yeah. Isaiah, I don't think you, you know, in Isaiah, it says specifically, God is quoted as saying, "I create good, I create evil." So omnibenevolence is something that was added to it. It wasn't a original sure. conception. Yeah. I don't it think you bad. can have omnipotent. I don't think you can have uh, omniscient. I don't. I, there's uh, there's a lot of these things. I don't think you can, you, you can't yeah. even have conscious. <laughs> I mean, I, I, most people think their God is conscious. 
Sure. Uh, like, I, like I said, I can explain it, but we can we don't have to we don't have to address it now. We can talk about yeah, it another time. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's what I said. An, another topic, but or another time, another discussion. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, another podcast. <laughs> Please. All right, so like um, we, we kind of understand, like, for example, like, you know, you get a kid, a 12 year old in an inner city, commits a crime. The Republicans, conservatives will throw the book at him, try to put him in jail for 20, 30 years because of this free will belief, because they'll say, well, this other kid on the next block didn't you know, commit a crime. So like it's his free will. So this is another reason why this is so important. There's so much unfairness, so much unfair cruelty that happens. Free will being. The, the rationale for it. Yeah, but uh, George, okay, let's say the judge doesn't believe in free will. What should that kid sentence should be? That kid who, let's say, murdered another kid. Well, it it should. All right, actually, we can we can um, go to an experiment on this. They actually did an experiment where they conditioned half of the subjects to believe in free will and half of the subjects to believe in determinism or you know no free will. And the, the, the half that believed in free will believed that this hypothetical criminal should be twi punished twice as severely, twice as harshly as, as the uh, unfree will believers. So, you know, whether, whether it's like going from 20 years to 10, whatever, you know, it should be commensurate with what's needed. Actually, it shouldn't, you know, it should be punishment to the least degree. Basically, what right. you want to try to do is rehabilitate the person and protect society. Anything beyond that is just cruel and unnecessary, but that's what the free will belief invites um, so many people to, to, to want. That, this is why yeah. a lot of a lot of free will skeptics are going towards what's called the quarantine model. Because because when you when you think of somebody who is quarantined for getting like a contagious disease, we don't blame them for getting the contagious disease. Yet we'll still quarantine them, even if they don't want to be quarantined, because they we know of the dangers involved if we don't quarantine them. Exactly. So so it's a quarantine model, but we understand that this person doesn't deserve really truly deserve to be quarantined. They don't deserve to be, you know, pinned up to where, wherever they're pinned in. So, so you know, we have to, and, and as soon as we can let them out and they're no longer a danger, then that yeah. is when we let them out. Yeah, right? That's probably the closest model that I represent, honestly, in, with punishment. Right. Yeah, and in, in quarantine model as well, it, be, it becomes um, a necessity, it becomes a, a goal of a quarantine is to eradicate that person of that disease. So that's the other component is it's not just to segregate them and then eventually let them out, but segregate right. them so that you can figure out what's wrong, what's going wrong here and, and fix that issue. I think I think the, the greater issue is that you're, you're viewing it as a disease and not a choice. It's something that came upon them. It's something that they had no volition in. That's the point right. is you're, you're seeing it as a disease instead of seeing it. Uh, as a conscious choice, that's the seeing, big um, seeing, determinant seeing factor. Evil, seeing evil as a disease rather than a choice. Right. Basically. Yeah, sure. And, and Something a lot of that can be added to, or it can, you can add to it and, and make it worse, or you can you can work you know you work with your body and try to heal it. So that you do have a component of choice there, but it's a, a more um, a more systems model that you know it's coming from someplace else. You know? For people who believe that this kind of system is unworkable, we just point to the mental health system. You know, psychiatry never blames an individual for being psychotic or neurotic or psychopathic or whatever, but that individual in society and the whole medical model understands that people just can't get away doing anything, you know, whatever they want. So we, we actually have a working model of, of, of an unfree will paradigm for, for instituting social order and, and rules and laws. We need to teach psychology. We need to we need to educate people and help people understand human psychology. That that goes back to my thing is as educating people in Education. science and biology and psychology, yeah, and philosophy. Okay. That's does what's anybody, missing. Does anybody here know any? Uh, George, I guess this is mostly directed to you, or any? I know Trick knows a lot about it, but if you look at the Northern European countries, obviously they have much much lower rates of recidivism, and they're you know they're. They don't have a, as high of a prison population, uh, you know, per you know, as far as percentage goes, as America does. What is what is the free will belief up there? Does anybody know anything? I think I've asked this before, maybe. But does anybody? Because because I really do. Because if you look at their prisons, they're not worried about like, oh, we can't give them this because then we're spoiling them. They give them those things, and then they go out and they're completely normal, and they be you know they behave. And so, does anybody know what they actually believe in terms of free will? 
You know, I, 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 I guess I'm just guessing, for example, before 200 years ago in the United States, we had a similar system. We had penitentiaries that were based on penitence. You know, somebody like, you know, had to do penitence for their sins. We had reformatories for people to be reformed. You know, so now we switch to this punitive model where they need to be punished. So I have a feeling that the Scandinavian countries still adhere to that implicit no free will model, that implicit model that says, well, you know, the devil, you know, made them do it or something outside of them is affecting them. And that could be like removed from them or reformed or transformed. I'm having I'm having like like psychological reactions every time you say it, every time you talk about it, I, I hear a voice in my head like my father's voice or something, you know, saying it's the exact opposite. You know, don't 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 try to blame anybody. You take responsibility, you know, like every time you guys talk about it, like I, I can hear like these little triggers in my head just because of my cultural conditioning. Right. It's a part of the culture, you know? Yeah. It's definitely an uphill battle that we're, we're fighting here because uh, you know, big time it's because it's culturally, it is culturally, you know, um, imposed on people, people, the free will belief is something that we kind of condition ourselves, you know, and then, and we condition our children with, you know, when we blame them and, and the way we blame people, throughout our you know our life it just conditioned basically that that there's, people have this freedom to have done there's it. not there's not enough there's not enough of the opposite i mean i can't i can't even imagine except in the in the setting in the context of like a you know a psychiatry um like a like a session like a, a counseling session or something or a psychiatrist speaking to a patient like i can't even picture um like the opposite model you know what i'm saying yeah. Hey, here's an example, guys. Um, you know how with the whole, whole gay marriage and homosexuality thing, how the debate goes on about whether being gay is a choice or not? Right, right. Yeah. Yes, that's something we talked about today. Actually, I was in a periscope with somebody and they were – somebody was on there saying, oh, homosexuality is like pedophilia, it's a choice or something. Yeah, it's – complete ignorance and, and um, uh, misconceptions, but that's a, that's a perfect um, parallel, uh, Chandler. Yeah. yeah, go for it. Yeah, because basically in certain areas, people are beginning to understand the reasons why something is not a choice. Biological. Biological, yeah. Yeah, whereas like, like a determinist or an incompatibilist – would just have to say have that to say, for the biological, but also environmental reasons why the things are not a choice. Right. Sure. Yeah. I mean, when I say biological, I, I mean everything that that includes, you know, environment, um, nature, nurture is usually what I say. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's all of it. Fine. Um, but it's it. The idea is it's not an individual. Uh, you know. Um, like cognitive choice that, that at any, like any given moment we're making these choices uh, like without any outside or internal influence. Right, so, I have a so question, guys. Of, go ahead. Um, I've been talking with a lot of libertarians recently on politics and economic issues. And a recurring theme you hear from libertarians and also a lot of Republicans, many of whom are libertarians, is this idea of personal responsibility when it comes to economics. Don't blame society. Don't blame racism. Don't blame institutions. For the most part, blame yourself for not being successful uh, in in some economic fashion. And um, the notion that there is no free will to a lot of of libertarians is like heresy. It's like you you just can't. As soon as you say that, like they leave the room. And uh, I was wondering if any of you guys have experienced this, and if this is the case, as it seems to be. How are how are we going to communicate with these kinds of people on the idea of no free will? Because it's such a taboo among libertarians. And also, Mike, Mike several months ago, we, we launched a campaign on the very liberal uh, political site Daily Coast. It's um, a community of bloggers. And we were doing just that. We were appealing to the liberals. We were saying, listen, this free will belief is the foundation of conservative ideology. They use it to blame the poor for being poor. They use it to basically 
condone you know people earning billions where, while people are starving. So um, so basically, we have to, like appeal to like the Democratic Party and liberals to be on our side about this. You know, like, if they really want to convince people that we should help the poor, that we should make society fairer. You know, this is the uh, this is a foundation for for that um, agenda. So let me ask you this, George, and everyone else. Is it possible to, to, to entertain any kind of notion of personal responsibility? What's all, are you guys hearing an echo also? Because I'm hearing a huge echo. Yeah, somebody's I'm got hearing an echo, so I'm muting. muting. Yeah, hit your mic and mute if you're not going to talk. Yeah. I think it's, let, me, oh. let me just ask this uh, one, one more question to George. Does, does the whole notion of, of personal responsibility go out the window once someone accepts that there is no free will, such that that can never be a point you ever raise in a conversation about economics, about crime, about anything? It depends no, on how you define no, no. responsibility. What happens is, Mike, what, what happens is, like, we are, we are hardwired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. Somebody want to mute? Um, so... Because of that, um, basically, we we respond to reward and punishment. You know, so in other words, we need our rules, we need our laws because we don't have a free will, because we're hardwired to seek pleasure and avoid pain and re and respond to reward and punishment. That's the answer. We you know we we can't do away with these rules because we don't have free will. But that doesn't mean I that people really... are actually morally responsible in any strong sense. It's, it's right. more of a, a utilitarian in a sense. Well, so, uh, so... Th that doesn't that that didn't really George, that didn't really answer the question. I mean, imagine this, for example, imagine a father who fully acknowledges there is no free will. Is it ever rational or acceptable for that father to ever tell his son who doesn't clean up his room like, son, you got to take personal responsibility for this? Or in well, any uh, context, is it ever okay to say to use that term to somebody? You have to use you have to take personal responsibility, given if there's no free will. Okay, that's a good question, Mike. I think we have because we're we're faced with uh, the challenge of changing the language a bit. So, like instead of like taking personal responsibility, maybe like we have to assume, quote unquote, assume responsibility. We're, or, we're taught that we're not responsible, but we kind of like take it upon ourselves. Uh, to be the agent of of the action that, that has been done, the yeah. most proximate agent. There's there's different contexts that you can use the word responsibility in. Like like you could you can use it in the sense of a sense of duty, and that isn't incompatible with free will. People can have causally have a sense of duty, and that's perfectly compatible. There's nothing incompatible with that. So so you could say that they have a sense of responsibility. That's a different type of responsibility than, than saying someone was responsible for what they've done. It's the, same, it's the same reason we have desires, we, have, um, we make choices, we have right. interests, we, we have convictions, we have responsibilities. It's the same thing, yeah. Right, so that, that type of responsibility, like it just as a, a sense of duty, isn't the type of responsibility that the free will skeptic is denying. The free will the skeptic is denying the moral responsibility, which is a, a stronger uh, just dessert type uh, of they deserve punishment, for example, for certain things, or they deserve um, incent certain incentives. They, they actually deserve those over other people, for example. Right, because they're I make fundamentally a, oh, responsible. I was just going to say, can I make a point that could we just teach biology? Could we just teach that we're, we're primates that are, that are evolving and we have – you know, um, a reptile brain and, and we have like these big adrenal glands and our bodies produce cortisol, a stress hormone that uh, causes us to react and overreact and, and get stressed out and frustrated and, and be fearful. I mean, all these things tie back into uh, the, the biological reality that we're animals and that we're in the process of, of evolving and, you know, becoming more and more civilized and more and more compassionate and altruistic. So if more people accept the notion that, you know, it's not that we're flawed, we're not born sinful, we're not born with this uh, inherited disease from imaginary ancient relatives, but we are, um, you know, creatures who are, are literally operating based on our prime directives uh, to, you know, fight or flight or um, to be afraid or submit or, or you know, like, like surrender to authority or 
resist certain things. You know, we're, we're reactive. We're, we're animals. I'm saying teach that we're animals. And that, that right there would be a huge, uh, because even though, you know, science and biology tells us that we are, how many people think of themselves like that? No, there's humans and then there's animals. That's how everybody thinks, you know, we're separated. It goes well, back even, to Jewish like, Christian concepts. Even if we don't, even if we don't separate uh, us from from the other animals and stuff, I mean, like we're all taught in junior high school probably that you know that our behavior and the behavior of all organisms is a result of nature and nurture. So, like, so we're taught this. This is standard, you know, in the curricula of every you know school system probably in the world. But people don't make the connection yet. And people say, fine, like they don't see how if we're the product of nature and nurture, that makes free will impossible. It's not. Yeah, it's not emphasized enough. I agree. Like it needs to be emphasized. It needs to it needs to be part more more of the discussion. But I mean, this is uh, like this is the, the pathway of, of, of human beings. I mean, we since we are uh, technologically advanced, since we do have morality and can think in abstractions, since there are all these differences in our species. Um, it's so easy to to uh, to feel like we're above nature, we're separate, that we, we're something else, even despite all the damage that the religions do and the religious indoctrination. But it, it's it's not it's almost like it's not intuitive. We're we're almost kind of uh, kind of raised up to to just think that we're gods and we're rulers of the I'll planet. Be back and, in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're rulers of the planet and and. Um, the solips, solipsist uh, mentality that you know that the, everything revolves around us and we're the most important things and it's completely opposite of a, of a biocentric attitude. But, yeah, right, so we, we've, yeah. we've been exploring the benefits like relative to society. We can also you know present the argument to to the population that your personal life, our personal lives, are going to improve vastly without this free will belief. For example, like. Once it becomes illogical to blame our friends, our family, people who, with whom we come into contact for everything, and it becomes Ill, just as illogical to blame ourselves, I'm telling you, there's going to be so much less anger in the world, so much more understanding and compassion and civility, you know, on a personal level, outside, you know, on, on a level, like, you know, more personal than, than societal. Yeah, and what if we actually... Uh, sorry, go ahead. On the note of what we teach in education, we teach, you know, biology and these things, and we, we, we say that things, you know, are, deter you know, nature versus nurture, and those things are taught, but what's not taught a lot in schools, at least not in, in my schools, and even I went to a poorer district, and then I went to a, a, a wealthier district, and neither one taught it, was philosophy, and I when I went to church, Absolutely. They, they, they separated those things, oh, well, that's just... That's science. That, that, that can tell us nothing about philosophy. And because they're allowed to create that dichotomy, they can then kind of pigeonhole the philo philosophical aspect while saying, so, even though science says this, phil philosophy has nothing to do with that. And so I so think once the again, this compartmentalized, this compartmentalized uh, uh, way of thinking is that everything is, is categorized and that's separate from that. Religion is separate from science. Science is separate from philosophy. Philosophy is separate from technology from uh, um, from industry from uh, politics it's you have to have a holistic mindset that says for example we're all one thing we're all one body we are we are differentiated and we're split up and we're we're subjective uh, you know experiencers but at the same time everything I do affects everything else and everything you do affects me if we're if we teach that if we teach this interconnectedness which is like foundational in pantheism we teach that and it, it, it does this has the same effect yeah I agree I agree with Paul, because they are all connected and it's not and i think it's not so much that people need to be taught new things but that they just need to connect um the existing things and realize their connection connect the dots and and learn learn about reality actually learn what reality is we live in a very stratified uh, culture. I mean, everything is, you know, everything is differentials. Everything is subjective. Everything is personalized. Everything is, is me, me, me. And, and we're obsessed with individuality. And I don't think individuality is a bad thing. I think it's just become perverted, especially in Western culture. I think it's important to recognize that even the idea of individuality is an illusion. I mean, we feel like individuals, but like I know I'm not. <laughs> we're, we're individuals as like my finger is 
to like my ear, you know, but literally still part of the same body. And if we teach and promote that, if we actually teach reality, like scientific biological reality of how our DNA is 99.9% .9 identical to that tree, you know, and we're like literally a chromosome away from, from being a chimp, then, you know, again, going back to we're animals, if we teach that we're animals, it gives, it, it gives a, 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 a foundational premise uh, for understanding um, human behavior. Teach anthropology, teach um, psychology, teach the actual sciences, man. Uh, our, our, our culture is not modeled to, to just learn the, the facts. We're, we're, we're geared toward learning what is pleasurable, towards, towards you know, uh, pursuing whatever it is that, that brings us uh, profit. It's, it's just backwards. You know, this, this uh, free will belief is so ingrained in us that I don't know if it's a majority, but a large percentage of psychologists, biologists, and anthropologists, both hard and social scientists, are going to continue to believe in free will. I mean, they, they do. Like you've seen Psychology Today art, art, um, articles, you know, arguing for free will. The American Medical Association, their ethics journal, you know, argues for free will. I mean, it's insane, but that, that's how pervasive and strong this illusion is. It's fascinating. I've I've never um I've never seen it. I've never I've never even heard it come up except sort of in religious circles. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like we we were talking about like I agreed with what Poffa was saying about you know teach biology, teach that we are animals. And I t while I fully agree with that and think it leads to more people going vegan, the problem is the resistance to it. Like you know, for, you know, so many Christians, like even my mom, like they can't stand the idea of evolution. It's like, well, I believe in God, therefore evolution's false. And it comes from Chandler. It comes. It comes from. <sighs> The, this false dichotomy, um, it, it comes from, first of all, thinking that if you believe in evolution, if you believe that you're an animal, that means you're made of pond scum. That means, you're, um, <laughs> that means you're, you have no dignity. That means you're, you have no, uh, no self-worth. And it's the exact opposite. When you teach biology, you actually teach how exquisite and extraordinary and how complex and beautifully uh, crafted our bodies are. And that there needs to be a, a, a deeper appreciation for you know, what actually exists. Instead of this uh, false dichotomy that um, okay we we exist but we're not perfected we're not we're, we're not perfect and we don't we're not at this ideal yet so that means we're flawed and so we're sinful and all this stuff you've got these extremes that are in play and there just needs to be balance and like understanding I mean, you don't judge a cat or a dog you know for for doing the things they do you recognize them, them, them as animals we have to look at humans as animals and understand human nature is animal nature it's animal behavior right the other major concern is moral relativism a lot of like um scientific people don't adhere adhere to this like idea that there's a quote-unquote absolute morality you know so like so people would prefer to believe that life is good that there is goodness and to a lot of people's minds you know that requires a divinity. They they don't understand how like goodness is defined as what creates happiness, and you know that the world is you know contains both good and bad. And that's another thing. Again, getting back to that, you know, the challenge is like to get people to to accept that no, the the world is not completely good. I mean, they they should understand that anyhow. But like that um that fundamentally, fundamentally, I mean. You know, I'm not, I'm not even sure how to, how to say this because, like, you know, can we define uh, a secular scientific world as as good? I I believe that we can because of the 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 path that evolution has where, where evolution has taken us that we have become more and more sentient, sapient, uh, higher evolved, more self aware, um, more altruistic. I mean, that is the path of highly evolved organisms. We we become. Um, you know, more cognizant of our surroundings, of, of the impact we have on the environment, on each other. Um, absolutely. I, I, it's not that it's out there floating somewhere in the ether that good and evil and right and wrong is out there. It's an emergent property of nature itself. Like nature through living organisms is developing the sense of morality, specifically through human beings. But we're definitely not there yet. I mean, we, obviously we have you know, slaughterhouses filled with animals that yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's ridiculous, as... right? So, and, and obviously the evolutionary process itself is a horrible process. It's, it's, it's gradual. Now. 
very and it's very it's very stop and stop and go start and stop i mean many species have, have died out you know there's there's dead ends everywhere but life life continues on in some form or another and it's always there is always a um sort of the 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 there's a penchant toward greater and greater levels of consciousness. That's the point. So right. there is there is a, a force of good. Um, it's it's just also I mean it's also ca- um, counteracted with nature itself. There are also forces because every every other every other living animal is also trying to survive and trying to eat and trying to um, fulfill its own uh, prime directives of survival, so that they can become a threat to us, bacteria and other organisms and and other things that want to kill you so it's just nature at different levels is evolving and just trying to survive um and that's why they're essentially as good and evil that's why humans are evil because they're literally just uh following their own um sort of biological imperatives and they've not yet developed self-control and discipline and things like that you know Poffo, you said something i see the evolution of life as something more harmful than than of the good i guess I, I, what? I see the good. What do, you, what do you mean? I you see the that? evolution of life in general causes way more harm than the latter. Than, than, That's than fascinating. The good. You, you see, it actually, I mean, most scientists um, see evolution as a random blind process, which it is, but the, the I, I'm result. I think causes. Causes. It result. is a random blind, blind process. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so, the, so it's a dumb process that leads to more harm than good, is what well, I, I, don't, what I would say. Ex- explain. And, and like in, in nature, in, for example, in, in the in the animal kingdom, there, there's animals that are dying of starvation. There animals that are eaten alive daily, every second of, of sure. every, you know. Uh, you're, you're, you're talking about it's a trick. It's, it's, it's the right. worst nightmare. Yeah, talk, it's, well, yeah, yeah, let's, it's, let's, it's let's hard, examine man. this. In terms of the animal kingdom, right? Let's say an animal lives a hundred days, right? And in five minutes, you know, it's a gazelle, right? And a gazelle is attacked by a lion, you know, devoured or whatever. There, there might be pain for five minutes and stuff. So, like, but like for the, those, you know, the most of those hundred days, it seems that that animal was enjoying their life. I, I disagree. Here, they're, they're probably starving. There, there's a big chance they're starving. They're probably no, actually, have, have, have uh, insect, yeah. insect infestations. They're probably William, enduring the extreme I, I heat or extreme cold. Okay. William, I agree with you, but you just proved my point. And you disproved your point because in human societies, we don't have to suffer as much because we've evolved. In human societies, we've developed uh, medicines and, and we can um, utilize, right. you know. But, but we're also, we, we're also have um, double the amount of animals within, right. you know, that, that we're keeping in captivity in sure, horrible sure. conditions. This is that, what happens that override when override any pleasure that us humans well, yeah, this, is, this is what happens when you have a, a species that, that ends up becoming the dominant species. We're, we're at the top of the food chain. We're basically the apex, apex predator, the apex predator that is basically oppressing and uh, now industrialized our production of, you know, of food. But, but by, human, by humans, the, the 7 billion humans on the planet <clears throat> pale in comparison to the trillions of animals that are on the planet. Yeah, yeah but like, for example, back, I mean, like, you got to understand, we got to start, all right. The, the earth has been around, what, 4.5 billion years or so, but <laughs> good and evil, pain and pleasure have only been around 300 million years, okay? Um, they, they uh, you know, apparently that, what I've heard ascensions, you know, started with the, the decapods, the crustaceans, you know, lobsters and stuff. So sure. in other words, like the vast majority of life are bacteria and viruses and all, you know, these, 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 um, these right. microorganisms that you know, I'm not sure we can uh, ascribe. No, no, I'm talking about sen- them, sentient life. Like I wanted to, I wanted to get but, but back I, to what the, the trick. Said. Wait a minute, I'm, trick. I mean, like, yeah. I, where where is your um your evidence that, for example, um the life of, of birds and, and and of beavers and of, of wolves and, and and all that stuff in the wild that they that is it's more painful than pleasant. I, I don't see that evidence because there's con- they're constantly in in in. They're, okay, I, let's, I, let's, I let's, let's, look at, let's look at weather, for example. They're, they constantly have to endure freezing cold or hot temperatures. But they they may not they feel the way we do. They oh, come on. They, they, have, they have a central nervous system. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. I, I, I really want to address this. I really want to yeah, address this. Those ears, man, I, in the winter, they have to be fucking cold. No, for example, like uh, 10,000 years ago, we didn't have like indoor heating and stuff like that, and I have a feeling that our ancestors were much hardier than we are. 
that it didn't get to them as much. Uh, I, will, I don't I think say so. That animals, animals absolutely have it so extremely difficult, and life is so hard, and everything is a struggle, and it's a just a brutal, you know, fight for competition, for mating rights, for for food resources. I actually, I absolutely agree with you, but at the same time, you are you are judging um, the animal kingdom, which we are a part, but you are judging uh, non-human organisms based on human constructs of pleasure and pain. So you're projecting, oh my God, it's so harsh for them. They actually don't know anything anything else. They don't know any different. They will always try and survive and, and experience pleasure, and they do, and, and all life forms Yeah, they, of course, all, 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 all life forms will try to survive, but, but they, that doesn't mean that they're enjoying life. Pleasure. That doesn't mean that that, that life it, is something that they're, that is pleasurable to it. it it's, yeah, 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 you've never I seen I don't know, it. my you've dog never, seems to have a lot of pleasure, so. You've never seen bears, like, yeah, frolicking or, or, or lions or animals? Animals yeah. frolic yeah. and play whenever they have a chance, whenever they have time. They have a lot less time, uh, unless they like, I'm saying if, if you were to look at if you were to look at the bulk of the harms in, in the animal kingdom compared to the pleasures, there's no to, way I'm, there's no I'm way you could to, compare the two. There there I'm is no explain, possible way. But I'm trying but to explain in, in the natural Whoa. world. In the natural the world, disease is the exception. In the natural world, I don't think most animals die of disease. I think most animals die of being devoured by some other animal. And I, and I think that that's a relatively fast process. You know, it's it's not, it's not. A, a some, some animals, some animals don't even die for days later. Like they'll, they'll be eaten half, and they'll yeah, like, you know, like the lion. Like I know what you're saying, you're saying but some of these, like some of these cats, these cats they, play with their food before they kill them. Yeah, yeah they, I know they what you're saying, like but they don't have a those... short process. It, even even a minute process of, of being eaten alive is 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 not worth the entire life of that animal. It, well, that's Trick, how horrible I, it is. My understanding is like it, you know, with human beings, don't we go into on. shock? Don't we yeah. don't we go into shock when we're we experience yeah, such trauma? Absolutely, absolutely. Our bodies are, are designed that way. That actually, it's actually very merciful. If you get an uh, arm or a leg or a limb cut off, I, your, I want you to think of think burn. of uh, what the worst horror movie you've seen, and I've the seen them all. Animal <laughs> Kingdom doesn't pale in comparison to that. Is what I'm uh, saying. I disagree. I, I, I know this. What we're doing to animals in in these factory farms is like so much more cruel than than than, than nature ever is. It is. I, I, it is. That's, I, I, that's hell. I, I we all agree on that. I'm sure we all agree that. on that. Yeah, yeah I agree on that one. Is you... let's which we're talking about the the general the generality that it is nature generally good or, or, or kind or nurturing. It's both. It's it's both vicious and cruel and indifferent and it's also kind and nurturing and it absolutely provides every living organism with everything they need and to experience pleasure. And I, I keep trying to make this point, but it's difficult to get in. You <laughs> you are looking at it like from a human perspective, which you have the capacity that anim most animals do not have not developed their brain to that capacity where they are experiencing psychic, like psychological pain the way humans do. They experience I physical I, pain. I think and they, fear. they experience psychological pain as well. No, they, but they I do. Dude, I'm an animal lover. I, I'm all about animal rights. Trust me. I'm saying, I'm saying that in the wild, they, it's not the same as what you're projecting onto it. I'm saying it's, it's, it's awful and it's horrible. But at the same time, it's fair, like because their children pass on, their 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 offspring continue, and life continues, and it and it makes them more and more and more efficient organisms, whatever they are. It makes them stronger, makes them faster, that's, makes that's them more. A, that's funny. not necessarily. See, see, it's, I think it's a naturalistic fallacy to see it's, to think that that's ne necessarily sure. a good thing. That yeah. the continuation of life, for example. I, I'm saying it's a good thing because of where it leads. That it leads to us. It leads to a higher. Uh, sentient, sapient organisms who have compassion, who understand and can can exhibit altruism and can actually preserve I, and protect life. That's what I, it's leading to. I yeah, disagree, Paul. I totally our disagree. Life isn't worth all of the harm that's that's occurred. Like like if we had a, the option of of no life ever existing, I would choose that option. I, but I the understand. fact that we're here, I think, is a good thing because we can do something about the harm that is in the world. You're you're so, you're you're preaching my own uh, philosophy right now. That that literally, um, we are now in control of our own evolution and human beings can end pain and suffering and we and that nature has evolved to this point where like we can we can minimize pain and suffering we can right. we can you know uh we, like natural selection okay 
survival of the fittest, you know, dog eat dog world competition has brought us to this point. And now that it's brought us to this point, I'm not making the naturalistic fallacy because I'm not saying we should we should uh, <clears throat> practice social Darwinism. I'm saying we should practice humanism, humanistic values. We should actually have a biocentric attitude where we uh, right. are, are compassionate and we include all life forms. And and that's only po made possible through us, the most successful primates on the planet. You see what right. I'm saying? I, I totally agree with you on that. So I totally, uh, but I think and we're, I, and I agree we're with talking you. about and two separate things. And I we're care, and I I deeply care about animals and what animals go through and how they suffer. I mean, I I'm, I rescue animals all the time. I take care of ferals, raccoons, and skunks and opossums, and um, like I my entire um, you know, philosophy, my whole system is is based on the idea yeah. of uh of protecting and preserving and, and, you know, caring for, um, suffering and sick and injured. And, and I think, I think of this stuff all the time of how harsh and how horrible this is why it's such an atrocity and it's such a fucking sin what we do to animals because it's already so hard for them. They already have it, have it so difficult, you know, and we, we've gotten to this yeah. point where we we're the masters of the planet, so to speak, in terms of our influence and our ability to manipulate the environments and with technology. I gotta, all right, fish. You know? Fish. There's probably. I'm guessing. I don't know. This is just a guess. I'm guessing there's a lot more fish in the ocean than there are animals on land. Sure. And like mm -hmm. with a fish, I mean, what's it doing? It's just swimming around. Then it gets eaten and it gets digested. It can't take more than a day to get digested, right? But where is the the the, the pain that a fish is going through before it gets? It, it eaten? all depends. I mean, I, we we don't know much about fish, but but I think I think that they probably starve. They, I think they I think suffer. They, they yeah, suffer. they suffer. They, I think I think they don't suffer, suffer right? to the capacity. They don't. They're not suffering to the capacity that human beings suffer because human beings have the capacity to suffer psychologically, like deep, deep emotional trauma. And animals suffer trauma too. I'm not saying that. Yeah, I, well, especially, that especially pigs and and sure, dolphins. Sure. And, Mammals, and all mammals, like cetaceans, absolutely. Uh, the, the higher the life form, the, 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 the bigger the brain, the, not the bigger the brain necessarily, but the, the more developed more the complex. neocortex. The more complex their brain is, the, the more developed neo neocortex, frontal lobe, that actually gives the animal, the organism, more of a capacity for, for kindness and, and altruism and love and compassion and for uh, hatred and, and envy and violence and cruelty and, and greed and envy, you know what I'm trying to say? Like the, the more yeah. evolved we are, the more we have the capacity to minimize suffering and the more we have the capacity yeah. to suffer. And, and don't get me wrong. I totally agree with you. Like the more we evolve, the better. <laughs> that That's not what, my, what I'm arguing. I'm saying life in general, just throughout the ages, yeah, because, because it is a horror is a story. <laughs> nature, nature is a baby that's growing up. It, nature is one gigantic organism that's just learning how to walk, man. It's just learning what right and wrong is through us. It's just learning. Like right. as it goes along, it's it's a little it's a little toddler that's like stumbling around that only knows how to cry and shit its pants and and you know and shove food in its mouth and and that and now it's it's kind of like a, a teenager that's just learning. Well, it's bad. It's wrong to steal. You know, I actually have an identity. Like I actually, you know, can can um can can make a difference. You know, um like I, it's understanding who and what it is, and that's that's what's happening. It's developing through us. Right. Right. Anyway, I think we got we got totally off topic there. <laughs> if you don't mind, discussion. guys, I'd like to bring it back to the free will topic because to the extent that we understand that we don't have a free will, we won't blame ourselves for what we've been doing to those animals. Right. Well, then, so, right then that invites the question because like this is like somewhat theological because what you know, what I use to try to get people to be kinder is like recognizing that 80, 90 percent of people, at least here in the United States, believe in God or a higher power. I try to make the argument, listen, if you believe that stuff and we're torturing these animals, you know, what goes around comes around. So like the question I want to pose to you guys is like, is there a naturalistic justice? Wait, okay. I understood everything you said, and then you, but then you're taking it back to in nature, is there – is there like, justice? For, for example, like if, if I walk around in the dark, and this has nothing to do with religion, and, and I'm not careful, I may stub my toe. So that's kind of like a natural punishment for my lack of uh, concern, my lack of yeah, carefulness. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. Through cause and effect, through causality, through cause and effect, life teaches us, nature teaches us what is helpful, what is harmful, uh, what is beneficial and what is destructive. It teaches you as you go. It, it is the teacher. It, it's you, you do reap what you sow, 
But um, on a societal level, actually, you don't. You can get away with all kinds of stuff. You know, the rich prosper, then the poor, and the the, the dis, you know, the, the unfortunate. Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no real karma, I guess. Is, is a, no, I don't a believe in karma at all. I right. believe in cause and effect. That's it. Right. And you can learn from cause and effect, and you can learn lessons um, through consequences. It's all about consequence. Consequences actually are the basis for morality. We learn morality through suffering, through experiencing, you know, good and bad, and and you know. Um, the whole the whole experience of life. So you're saying that in order us. to like get the world to become vegan, for example, then it has to be appeal to their like physical health. That to the extent that you stop eating. Oh, these for animals. many no many reasons. He uh, appeal to the health. They do exactly what it's doing. Appeal to our sense of compassion, our sympathetic neurons to show that that we are we are animals. We, all life forms are are in a sense equal in the in their in their um goes right back to what we're saying like their their capacity to suffer to to experience things um and and that if if we are all one organism if we are all united and interconnected and if we are all interdependent on each other then we are killing ourselves we're killing our own humanity when we kill and murder and rape and torture whether it's human human or non-human life we are we are like completely um stifling our own evolution and we're going backwards you know we're harming ourselves as long as we engage in in you know, um, empathy and I mean, apathy, ap apathetic behavior and, and selfishness and greed. But how, do, how does the individual understand that? The individual, the average individual isn't a philosophical. They're right. basically saying, oh, no, like I eat this animal. I win. They lose. I feel great. Right. Right. Well, that's that's exactly what happens in the wild with dominant organisms that um that are, like I said, at the top of the food chain. So it, it has it, it has to do with. Are the development of our awareness, okay, of our place in the grand scheme of things. That we are, um, a, we are not at the top. We are not superior. Um, we are, we are superior, and we are influential, more influential in some ways. But in other ways, I mean, uh, you know, viruses, m mosquitoes, bacteria are more successful than us in, in many ways. But, so but you it, do have to. Uh, you, do, you do have to appeal to empathy, uh, like like people that aren't. If if someone is a psychopath and doesn't have that empathetic um, right. part of the brain, then then there's no there's nothing you can say to them that that they're going right. to make them then, care then that they they're hurting animals. They have to be quarantined. They have to be removed. They right. have to be taken out of the equation and and yeah. So um, those people have to be quarantined, the and the others them. we have to appeal to their empathy, which I think we, is is the large majority. I think you can yeah. appeal to their empathy, their intelligence, yeah. their their emotions. I mean, you, you watch just spend a day watch uh, Earthlings, watch oh, yeah. Cal Spears, knives you know forks over knives, um, watch Food Inc, and literally it, it will change your entire perspective overnight. Watch I've a few, seen all watch three a few of those movies. documentaries. Yeah, yeah I think I, I, a lot of us have seen them all. So I've been a but, vegan but for ten years, so I hear you. Yeah, it's it's awareness, man. It's all about raising awareness and and recognizing like um, that we are all in this together. That's what we have to. That we're not isolated. That this is not an isolated system. We don't live on an island. It, maybe it was that that way for a while. We only uh, um, extended our love and our, our compassion, our acceptance to our, our tribe, our immediate tribes. But now we are a global uh, we're a global community. Now a lot a lot of vegans they they say oh you know what we should. All animals should be free, but I still have I still say that the suffering in the wild is just as important as the suffering. It's an in important. That's a that's a um. It's a very interesting point. I mean, uh, I I've thought about this. I mean, when we when we cover these topics, just so you guys know, I mean, there's not an a like one aspect of this that I've not like written about or talked about at some point. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying this is exactly where my focus is. So on on that subject, I actually believe that that down the road, and I'm talking maybe millions of years, I believe that if humans, if we make it, I believe it's our job to end all pain and suffering. It's a very simple process. That, like take, take this example and then just um, extrapolate and project it into the future. If I raise a, an animal that's normally um, in the wild would be a, a predator, would be a carnivore, and I raise him in my house and I essentially you know, grow meat – for him, or or you know, produce whatever uh, if, if it's a plant-based or whatever, and they they have no need to to hunt or or you know be competitive or whatever. Like they will essentially be docile, and that their instincts will still come into play. But you see these these bonds that that trainers have with bears, with wolves, with lions. They will they will um their natural instinct 
uh, their predatorial instinct will get suppressed and other aspects of their personality, the other parts where, they're, where, they're, where they play and they're frolic and they're, and they're loving, that will, that will start to take over. So what I'm trying to say is we as a, as a superior species in, in, in the way that we are superior, we actually have the ability to, um, to completely end all death, all pain and suffering, all harm. We can, we can regulate populations. We can, um, separate animals we can help other animals evolve to, to the same level that we're at and, and well, Papo, this is, this i mean like, vision. If, if, for, if you just consider the oceans the animals in the oceans i'm not sure you know the only way we could do that with like for example fish is to ge genetically modify them because like and in terms of like life in general that that is the problem we evolved pain unnecessarily pain is a messenger that something needs to be addressed. There's a danger to us, our physical body, whatever. Right. That messenger did not have to evolve in a way that necessitates the experience of pain. It's very so, interesting. So we in talked other words, about like, that last week, yeah. Yeah, we so, so in other words, like evolutionarily, it may take, you know, several million years or a hundred million years, but like it could be that um, maybe we, you know, the Earth has experienced numerous extinction, extinction level events, right. you know, so it, all it takes is one huge comet to send us right. back to like paramecium and to re-evolve in a way that like, yeah, that we're, you know, we experience just pleasure and no pain. You know, yeah, for, I, I for really, human I, it's interesting. I want to understand that better. Like, so you, you, you mean physical pain, psychic pain, all, all both, forms of pain? Both, yeah, because think about it, both physical and psychic pain serve as messengers to the system system to protect the system but theoretically there's no reason why that messenger has to hurt um only but only if we are structured in a society and we're kind of like protected protected from danger and from harm and stuff like that like like we we absolutely need it is what i'm trying in to other say words, it's, I, I, it's I, I put my hand on a hot stove right Instead yeah. of it saying, ouch, let me take it off, it, it could say, wow, it feels so great to pull it up really fast. <laughs> I've never thought about that. Reversing it so that like – I don't know, reversing the um, the communication from the neurons that like that like pain – that there is a, there's a positive reinforce. There's a positive motivation to avoid pain instead of a, of a negative one. Well, or, or just a neutral. For example, like we, we hurt our finger or something and there's a message – that goes through our cognitive system that says, all right, the finger's been help, hurt. We need to bandage it, do it, whatever. But this doesn't have to involve pain. I, I don't think I don't think organisms, I don't think life forms are that smart. We have not evolved to that level I where agree, it'll I be agree. enough of a motivator. It won't be enough of a motivator to, hmm, let me think. It's the same exact reason why I don't know if this free will thing is going to catch on because I don't think we're that smart. I think we, we respond in a more primitive, uh, in a much more primitive sense to um to fear to danger to pain to discomfort that's what we respond to yeah, best. No, we're, yeah. We're evolution evolving beyond pain i'm talking millions of years but the free okay. will thing because again for example it's so harmful to our relations to you know relative to climate change and stuff you know it it, it may be that we absolutely have to evolve mm -hmm. it if we're going to uh, continue otherwise we will continue to be like you know um uh, uh, in conflict over dwindling resources or whatever, it may be that to the extent we overcome this free will belief, we're finally cooperating rather than competing with each other. Right. And, and cooperation and symbiotic relationships and um, homeostasis is exactly the goal. And, and that only can come about once we realize that we're like all part of the same population, the same, the same living organism, recognizing the, the sameness instead of the, the distinction. Um, and like, if we, we might not make it, I mean, uh, the homo sapiens, you know, we, we might end up completely ruining the ozone layer and we are subjected to radiation and we die out or whatever it is, uh, you know, overpopulation and, and we end up using up too many of the resources and it blowing, just, the earth ourselves just up. A, blowing ourselves up a nuclear catastrophe or, yep. Uh, or, or the Earth just becomes another Mars, becomes a, a complete barren wasteland desert, and our atmosphere does no longer support life. But other microorganisms and other life forms through panspermia or, or the surviving ones on the planet will, will again emerge and, and take over. And the, in the life of the Earth, it's nothing. It's like just a, a blip. But you know, so it, it might not be humans. I mean I, I, I'm going to do everything I can to um, – to contribute to to the evolution of our species and, and try and help us all 
uh, evolve in a positive way. But you know, yeah, might be we, we have to accept crazy, that. Right? Might... I, yeah, I that's why. No, by, the, by the time a new uh, species evolves on Earth, like say say we wipe uh, all the all the species wiped out on Earth except for uh, I don't know cockroaches or something. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe cockroaches or something, and, and things evolved from there. Yeah. By the time they evolve to, or, or let's say non-conscious life, well, let's say all all conscious life has been wiped out, and non-conscious life is still exists. By the time it, it evolves to more sentient conscious life, it, it, it'd probably be that the sun has engulfed the earth at, at that point. It expands, yeah, if it expands yeah. enough. And, and then so the earth uh, will be uninhabitable. Yeah, silverfish, man. You ever look at a silverfish? They look exactly the same from like the uh, early pre-Cambrian Cambrian, um, era or whatever. They, they, they were gigantic back then and they lived – they were aquatic. But they look exactly the same and they're just tiny now. And they're pretty hardy, man. I mean, however, whatever they're doing, they're doing it. They, nature is allowing them to stay in essentially the same form, just in a miniature miniature version. So I read about yeah. silverfish actually, because because there was something called a silverfish in the game Minecraft. So then I looked it up on Wikipedia, and apparently it's not a fish, but an, actually an insect. Insect. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, t I'm talking about the insect. That's what I'm talking about. I know, it's but I just think it's I just yeah. think it's cool to clarify that that it's not actually a fish, but an insect. <laughs> it's a it's an it's an arthropod. Yeah. It's, you know, guys, what, what we're talking about fundamentally with all of this is increasing pleasure, reducing pain, increasing happiness, and all. And um, relative to that, you know, I cultivate. You know, I'm a pantheist in in the traditional sense that you know I am a theist. The, I, I, I attribute consciousness and intelligence to the universe. And another belief that it's a belief, you know, I can't begin to, to, to provide evidence for it, whatever. I mean, there's anecdotal stuff and all, but I just, it, I benefit or it, it pleases me more to believe that, that we do not end with our life, that, you know, we're part of this one and we continue eternally. And the reason I do this is like, you know, all this we're talking about, fine. We, we, um, let's say we perfect, you know, we, we get rid of all pain on the planet. Right. But, but consider, for example, like the life of, of an average person, let's say at the time, let's say we or increase it to a thousand years, each person's uh, living a thousand years, but then you've got like, 14 billion years that the person didn't exist and a gazillion years that, you know, in the future that they won't exist. So in other words, like from this vast universal perspective relative to time, it really doesn't matter what we do or what we don't do, how we succeed or we, we don't. And so I, like, I just, well, hold I, yeah, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Relative to that, relative to that, it's pleasing to, <clears throat> to believe that, um, that we exist because otherwise Fine, like for our personal lives, yeah. Right? Let's let's say we make them perfect, completely perfect, and we live a hundred years. We're gone for like you know the rest George, of eternity. George, I really, I really want to address this. I really want to address this. Okay, <laughs> I understand. I understand exactly why you appeal to an afterlife, um, because it's it's the concept. And please, just let me let me finish explaining this. It's the concept that our, our lives are temporary. It's the impermanence of existence that it almost seems futile. Doesn't matter how long we live. It's what you're saying, basically. That that as long if we're gonna die, if we still end up as worm food, then it all kind of seems pointless. But this is why I disagree. Um, I don't believe in an afterlife because there's not enough evidence for one. I don't believe that our consciousness um, continues in the same coherent form. But life itself is eternal, and, it, and, and life continues to evolve and, and sort of reincarnate in a biological f way of, of reincarnation. And all of the knowledge and all of the experience and everything that every single, every single life form experiences is, is stored in the DNA. It's stored and passed on, and all that information gets passed on and passed on and passed on. So every – as long as life exists somewhere – as long as life exists at in some place in the universe, then then it's not in vain because the memory and the information and the knowledge that the 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 genetic um, material, the the genetic information that the programming is still there, and it's it, every single experience is adding to it. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So the the omnia, what I would call the omnia, is gaining knowledge and wisdom, and it doesn't matter what life form through which life form or which life forms die out. As long as there is a life form in existence, it carries with it the memory that goes all the way back to the exploding stars and the Big Bang. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't see the importance of, of life form. Like, like why, why is it important that other life forms exist in the future? That, uh, it's, it's important because it, I, it's, I'm saying it's important because that's exactly what the universe has uh, allowed and created. That's, it wouldn't not be well, in, it wasn't universe, it exist. It was, like in the past, there was no life forms. You know, the life there was forms there were right there were Earth, there were planets and and um, and, and it's quite possible and that we'll have the heat death of a universe. Which, uh, if that's the case, then it's we, quite possible that life by, life will by that by that stage. Listen, 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 trick. By that stage, life will have evolved. Okay, to become pure consciousness, so we'll literally be able to manipulate our environment. So the physical I environment. I don't know. Well, about that. <laughs> The heat death of the universe means that all energy in the universe yeah. is it, it basically um, I know, and, I know it, it's I know used up. You, once you use up and, all the energy yeah. in the universe, there's nothing that consciousness can hold on to. And, and according to and according to Einstein's law of conservation, um, if it's within a closed system, the universe. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy is conserved. It's not. It's it's the work that's not. So so it it's, it spreads out. You know it, it it. I don't know how to say it. It every atom spreads out. It's it's it entropy basically. You you have this. You have. I understand. Entropy. Yeah. Okay. Well, therm, second law of thermodynamics. I, right. I I know about it. Um. The the point I'm trying to make is. Why is this this penchant for life and evolution and and higher and higher uh, states of consciousness even happening if that was not the teleological goal? And, there's, and the, there's no goal. There's no there's no teleological goal to the universe. There, <laughs> there's no teleology in the universe. That's from that's from an atheist uh, that's from like an atheist chaos. perspective. That's from an atheist perspective. That's not really examining um like like life and biology and the, and the biological it, process. Well, I, no, I, I disagree. With, within within um, life that that has consciousness but i am saying there's no there's no evidence that consciousness is anywhere but specific matter and energy states yeah i agree I, I think i think you're missing the the greater point why is it why is life evolving to become conscious in there's the no first why place? of evolution there, was, there is evolution not... isn't a why process evolution is a, pro, a process of cause and effect it doesn't, it's a process it doesn't, of cause and effect that started with a cause. Well, no, no, trick, for example. It doesn't, it doesn't say, let's no. build consciousness. It does trick, not, trick. Not. There, there's a why that's governing evolution. In other words, why does, an, why does any organism evolve to survive? This, this survival programming that's is just its, its general it's, direction. It's life, the process of, of least, uh, least resistance, basically. It's, why, it's causality. Why? Trick, trick, this is the point. Why? Why does, because it, it's a, why does it... Because it, because it starts with a reproducing molecule. Once you have a and that, reproducing molecule... And why did that, that, and why did that molecule, molecule... You said, why did that molecule... Why did that single-celled organism in the first place... Uh, reproduce and copy itself. There is no why. It's it's yeah, it's yeah. Just, it just is doing that. that state. <laughs> yes, yeah. It just yeah. so it just is. Happen, it's, so, it's like so saying there's why effects. why is there fusion in the sun? There's no yeah. why. There's, so there's, there's fusion in the that, sun. Effects because that take trick, out. trick. I think the best answer is we don't know. I mean, we can't categorically say there is no why. Right. And so will, the, the natural position say, at that point is to deny it. If if we don't know, then the natural position is to say I won't make a comment on that claim. Well, and, no, no, because quite. I mean, in, in in our experience, there's a why to everything. So if there's a why to everything, oh, why should that's not true? true. And the well, thing is, there's there's there. Okay, so I, I like the way that um, Richard Dawkins said this because it, it makes a lot of sense to me. We we have this misconception that like all questions are good questions. So. Why, why there, why evolution exists? Maybe that's a good question. Maybe it isn't. Okay, we seem to be in agreement that we don't know. But it might also just be as good as saying, like, what's the smell of purple? Like, it's just an, it's a question <laughs> that might have an. It is relevant. It is uh -huh. relevant and applicable to us, to the living organisms that exist right now, and that's what makes it important. That's what makes it. I know that Richard Dawkins says that the the question of why is a meaningless question because he's choosing to completely. Uh, look at it from an, like an empiricalist, empiricalist, um, scientific, uh, you know, materialist reductionist perspective. That's not how I'm looking at it because I'm not just a reductionist being. I, I have the ability to think and reason and imagine and dream, use imagination and and philosophize. So if I yeah. have the capacity to to think in terms of uh, philosophically, but, then but then why, that means why pre presupposes that there's an actual reason like, like no, it presupposes it, that, that that there's a that someone that something has yeah. thought of something and it says 
this is the reason why it's not a, pre, this is it's not a presupposition. It's it a is response. a presupposition. It's it's a yeah, response. It's pre- to I, 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 I would say it's a presupposition. It's a presupposition of intelligence. And so, that's, like, that's, we have we have this definition of intelligence that limits it to human beings and to these other organisms, and we don't realize that intelligence, at least logically, has to be ascribed to what created us. I, I disagree. With, I, agree I George, disagree. Course, I agree with George, of course, and it, and it, I, I say it's even more general, general than that. It's intention and intent. I'm, all I want to say is nothing can happen without a cause. It, you, you can't have an effect without a cause. A cause so, doesn't mean intent. Int- intent is an a, a, a actual conscious yeah. state. A, yeah. An intent, an intent, the cause, okay, cause is, comes Why does that from cause intention, to comes from nature's intent. Nature the, had no, intent. No. You're, well, you're, you're, you're you're jumping to a conclusion that's that that there's a no reason to jump to. Yeah, it's a non sequitur. Yeah. Hey guys, no reason to say uh, that there's intention. Chandler wants to speak. Oh yeah, okay, see, I have I have a few things to say about this because I feel like a little bit torn between these two different perspectives here, and I think there's a, a part of it is that when we're asking the question why is that we conflate a reason with a cause and they have a different senses like there may there's cause and effect absolutely of why something survives and reproduces but is there but is there a reason like is there a well thought out intention and there's a distinction there that I think is is definitely something that's going to require future longer discussions which I'm sure we'll have this discussion Chandler, in quantum mechanics you know, some physicists say, well, we can't find a cause for a certain phenomenon, so we're going to conclude it doesn't have a cause. So in other words, to say there is no intent is to, similar, is to say we can't find an intent, so there is no intent. Okay, but to do the reverse is an argument from ignorance. Right. To say that we can't find the intent, we don't have any evidence, therefore we oh. should conclude the opposite is an argument from ignorance. No, right, that's that's, what, that's, not, what, that's From my premise, it's like the, the, the universe is intelligent. So like That's you know that, I, yeah, that answers but, but, but what we do see. know is is where consciousness like like we, we have evidence for where consciousness is and yeah. we don't we don't make the claim that we can believe that consciousness is elsewhere other than the area that we have evidence for. No, no, say, we, I, we we have like the Princeton experiments where they had these random event generators and sixty points throughout the world and during the World Series like they're they're networked together, they go off random. This is a consciousness that's outside of human experience. All I want to say is nothing would that. nothing would transpire and nothing would actually take place unless there was a cause, and, le- and that cause is predicated on an intention. And that does not mean – I need to say something, guys, real quick. Okay, because it's all not predicated say, on intention. <laughs> all I want to say – that's fine. You can disagree with me. That's fine. Okay. But listen, listen to my point. Okay. All I want to – because I'm, I'm making a point based on information that, that I'm trying to share with you. Okay. Like, like I believe – that every person who disagrees with this is coming from an atheist perspective who already has a pre a predisposed sort of bias because you you you're afraid of where this might lead. I don't want you to think that that if you agree with me it means uh, that the God of the Bible exists or that there is a, a personal deity. I, that's not what this leads to. That's that's not at all. You know you don't have to be uh, afraid. To admit that that something caused all this, because even not, it's not I, can argument, promise, it's not I can promise argument. you, I'm not afraid though. Yeah, it's I not an argument okay. being afraid. That's, that's okay, not, let's just not people, afraid. Actually, yeah, I'm just, not afraid. People so use let's, that, let's people just talk use that same argument cause. for for God. They say they'll say, oh, atheists are afraid to believe in God, and and that's that's a, a, a fallacious argument. It's just, let's talk you know. about let's talk about nature. We know that nature exists. We know that the universe exists. All I'm really talking about is nature. So if we can if we can come at it from that way, all I'm saying. Is nothing would exist, okay, unless something on some level desired it to. Desired it's not true. Exist. There's, there's yeah, no reason to believe. I don't see how you came to that conclusion. Yeah. Because oh, you've got these laws exists. of nature. You've got these because laws of nature that the work together there. seamlessly. Po- You're po- telling po- me that that's not intended? The I don't, don't, thank you. I don't see why to assume that. Because the, the, the opposite of intention is randomness. How are these laws of nature going no, to work together is randomly? Not randomness. <laughs> there's, there's no reason <laughs> oh, to I, say I, that causality is intent. That, 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 that that's a non sequitur. Hey, look, guys. Is just cause and effect. Yeah, cause the trick you got to understand: <laughs> causality requires something that causes it. You know, so yes, it some... does, but not something intentional. <laughs> <laughs> intentional. Yeah. The difference with it between our philosophies is you you define 
thing, everything is a thing, whereas like it's possible to define everything as a being. I'm, I'm but saying, it doesn't have to be. There's, there's, it doesn't have to be. A, that. Semantic it's nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> things are beings listen, and listen, beings are things. I just got to get worried. I'm just talking about the laws of nature, okay? The laws of nature yeah, are constant and immutable, and they are constant and immutable for a reason. They bring about conscious life. The laws of nature are there, are there, and they operate. They're they're immutable. We we assume that. Second, second, we don't, we don't know if there's billions of other universes that are out there that have different laws of nature, and and ours just evolved via, you know, a a multiple. As far as we know, the laws are immutable. The the point. Yeah, as as far as we know, everything we describe in the universe is is based on these laws of physics. Correct. All I'm all I'm saying is the 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 fact that these there are these constants, and then what what these constants end end up bringing about through through natural processes. All of this is naturalistic. I'm not talking about anything supernatural. Okay. I'm saying that the laws of nature themselves, like, disprove this. The laws of nature themselves show you that 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 something wants. Okay, the laws themselves want to be laws. They are. They are. No, there's no. no, there's no laws are descriptive. To have want or intention in in the laws of nature. The, the, I'm, I'm saying the well, fact actually, that they're there in the first place. Gravity the wants there. to attract um, um, objects together. How can no, we it say does. it doesn't? It, it just does. What? It just it does. does. Not anything. <laughs> nothing does anything unless there is a desire to do so. Everything responds to everything else. That's the point. The fact that things even respond desire, and, and desire, attract. And repel. implies consciousness. A, There's a no rock doesn't fall reason. because it wants to fall. Right. It just right. falls. Exactly. No, because gravity wants it to fall. The rock has nothing to do with it, but gravity, gravity has not everything sentient. to do with it. Gravity never says, ooh, I enjoy falling rocks. You ascribe you ascribe <laughs> a fullness to the universe. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Within your worldview, you can't fathom the universe being conscious or intelligent. Okay. So you know it's, it's not that we that. can't there, fathom. There, it's no that we don't evidence. see necessary to do. There's you no are evidence. evidence. You are guys, trick, you are evidence. Say, ugh, you, your intelligence, thing, you don't have a free will, <laughs> but you're intelligent. Your intelligence is not yours. Your one, intelligence one is evidence of universal intelligence. One I thing. disagree. You guys are hilarious. I just want to say, I just want to say, in my in my ontology, okay? Yes. God, as you know, it does not exist in this in this physical reality in this time. But what I believe is that that intelligence that George is referencing, I don't believe it exists in this time in a cognitive, coherent sense, so that it's conscious. I believe it existed before the Big Bang, and I believe it's becoming conscious again through us. Why do you believe that's, that? Because that's possible. That's, let me let me I'll explain. Okay. Because of the trajectory, because of how everything has transpired, because I, that's what we observe in nature, that there was a first cause. Something that's initiated not, the Big Bang. Why, something why do initiated you know the Big Bang. Why, why do you know that? The, why do I know that something initiated the Big Bang? Correct. Uh, for all the scientific evidence that tells us the, the, the redshift what effect. About, what, what caused the thing that caused the Big Bang? You're talking about infinite regression. I'm trying to explain. Well, I'm just saying infinite regress and a causal events, they're both – they're both counterintuitive. It could be possible that an a causal event caused the universe or it could be possible that there was an infinite regress. But either way, there's no way to get get to either of those to consciousness or intention. Order. I'm trying trying to tell you that – The universe has order. Order is is a conscious process. The no, causation. I no, it's not. Conscious, trick consciousness is awareness. In order to govern everything or control everything, you have to be aware of everything. I don't think there's anything controlling anything. everything. Yeah. The no, that's, I'm trying control to explain everything. this, guys. Not right now. It's in. It's embedded in nature. It's actually inherent. It's. It's called eminence. The eminence. The eminent divinity, which is inherent in all, it's intrinsic in all matter. I'm saying it's an emergent property that's coming out of the universe itself, not from outside the universe, not from a transcendent deity. From but there's no evidence for that. Yeah, no evidence is you, you talking. This conversation you are right the now is no. not, not evidence for it. That's a presupposition <laughs> confirming it. Hey, guys, I have a serious question. Okay, I have a serious question. Hold on, hold on, Chandler. Um, 
trick. You are expressing intelligence, yet you don't have a free will, so that intelligence is not yours. You have to ascribe it to whatever is causing you to say what you say. I don't have Nature. to ascribe it to anything. I, no. it, it, it's ascribed yeah, to the cause, a causal <laughs> process that leads to a yeah. brain why state that causes a causal, the causal head. process <laughs> trick, like, you know, it has something as it, and it's like, all right, fine, we have to agree that, you know, what we're talking about essentially transcends logic in terms of the infinite regress, right? But if we're gonna like go to, to some kind of logical conclusion, you have to conclude that your actions, since they're not your own, are causally determined by something. Yes, no, they're no, causally no, no, determined no. by something, not something yeah, with not intent, not something, not something with consciousness. There's no, there's no yeah, can reason I, I, to I think that. Specify, oh, I wanna specify, I wanna specify. This consciousness doesn't doesn't know how it's gonna transpire. It doesn't know how evolution's gonna turn out. It's unconscious right now, that's the point. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't have anything pre-planned. That it, it can't be. The only thing that it wanted was to experience life, which is what life is doing. No, no you're, you're, you're saying why. You're using the word why. And there's. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Logan. Conscious. We're talking. When we say consciousness, we are talking about like humans. Like we and we know that they're conscious because we have conversations with them. We talk to them. There's an assessment. Okay. What is this assessment that you've done with the universe that shows that you can communicate with it and it talks back? On, on on every level in every on, on every scale like, as it, I interact with like, other it matter, it's, I'm, I'm like, trying to explain it. First, it. Whoa, 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 whoa! Let him explain. Let him explain. Let him explain. Let him explain. Hey guys, I, I see that the, you've reached an interesting point of disagreement here. And here's the deal: I'm supposed to get ready for bed, so here's what my plan is. Okay, how about I just mute my mic and then let you guys finish while I'll be taking my shower, finishing eating whatever I need to do, and then one of you guys can close out the episode, and I'll find out what happened later. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm cool. Right. I'm cool with that, but I, what, I don't know what to say. Like, who, who knows what to say? <laughs> Well, I, I don't. Yeah, so we're, we're just. I think me and Quaid are both looking for evidence. Like, what what evidence that's, do you have? That's that fine. That's I don't have evidence. Your intelligence is evidence. It. It's not Dude, your listen. intelligence. That's, that's, Dude, that's, listen, that's, listen. That's, it's okay. We got. We just gotta. We gotta take turns talking because we'll never be able to, to make any progress yeah, like we're this. We're just gonna be arguing. So I I have no problems giving you evidence. I have no qualms at all with giving you evidence. I told you I just did this for ten hours with the street epistemology guys. I have okay. no qualms with this at all. But we have to be able to like hear each other. And, and not like you know talk over each other yeah that's so we'll fine just... It just this is like really simple to me like okay so first of all consciousness is hard to define anyway but we see no, it's awareness I've, I've defined, it's, it's been to defined find. consciousness is awareness there's a hard problem of consciousness oh, no, no, no. for a reason though let me finish no, yeah. there are levels, problem, there, that refers to materiality finish. versus yeah. quote unquote there spirituality levels, that's not about awareness so, yeah, there so are levels psychologists, psychologists and philosophers are fighting about this and we just know the answer no. there are there are emergent levels of consciousness stemming from it's, awareness uh -huh. sentience sapience all the way up there are yeah, different levels right. of consciousness so, but, but everything is, is aware we, on its, its own way it's aware that's why it reacts the way it does Everything molecules react the way they do because so, they're responding to each what, other. What, okay okay so let's stop for a second what what do you, how are you defining aware what do you mean by aware every every single particle subatomic particle atom everything from from uh, microorganisms all the way up to blue whale to us on a on a certain level on the on the level that it's you're, that you're it's telling able. me the things that you think are aware but i want to know what do you mean by aware I'm, awareness I'm is a connection. Spo responsive to responsive to the other differentiated aspects of uh, of the environment of what's so, around. So it you're, you're defining our awareness as a cause a cause and effect is is just aware because that's I'm how just, you're defining. I'm defining it. it as a relationship that it is in relationship to to whatever else okay. is around it, and that awareness get, builds upon itself so that it eventually develops okay. sentience, eventually so, so develops here, sapience. Here's... Here's I don't use problem. consciousness. I don't say consciousness because I don't want people to think that I think that the universe is conscious. I'm saying yeah, but you, you're, everything. Using, you're using aware, which, which aware is just as problematic because because aware aware assumes consciousness. But that's you, what consciousness is. Consciousness is awareness. Yeah, but, but, but cause and effect, word, cause and effect aware, or relationships is not really considered awareness. So so no, cause and effect is the mechanism by which awareness takes place. I, yeah. I agree with that. In, that's in humans that's and and animals. Yes. Correct. In all yeah. things, in all no, things, not, in solar okay, systems, well, this in is galaxies, where, in suns and stars, that's why I, they respond. Then I don't to, to know what you mean things. by the word aware, because <laughs> you're then not. Don't, then don't use it. Then use use something else. Responsive. Oh, matter. Say, matter. Sure. Let's say it's matter. Sure. Energy. Energy. So matter. It's responsive to other to huh, other like, vibration frequencies. Like right, now, the same right now. Right now. All right. Give Quaid a chance. 
Okay. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Right now, we're trying to do studies on animals to figure out whether or not they're aware. And we have these criterion that we build to figure out whether or not they're aware. If you want to make it arbitrary, then it makes that whole effort futile. Like when we when we put a mirror in front of a dolphin to see if it recognizes itself, there seems to be this concept of awareness that we're not doing with rocks. But Quay, now, that's self-awareness. That's aware. different than Plants, awareness. Vegetation, I, trees are aware. Quay, Quay, self-awareness is a different term than awareness. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, well, they're both awareness, though, right? No, I know, but, but uh, that's a, self-awareness is an additional, it's a more complex awareness. That's, that's right. Can, can, can that's awareness great. happen without things such as qualia, thought, um, brain? Yes. Yes, yeah. you don't. It doesn't require the awareness that I'm talking about, which I guess um, George is equating to consciousness, because they they can be used interchangeably. I just don't do it because it becomes problematic in the way people hear it; they misinterpret it. But the awareness that I'm talking about, um, absolutely, a brain, a uh, nervous system is not required. I'm talking about the reason why things respond, the the reason why things react to other things. I'm it's saying because, that's it's because of just case. because of cause and effect. It's it's like like yes. a chemical reaction, for example. Sure. It's just like yeah. a chemical reaction. A chemical it's not just cause and effect. It's cause. It's like the laws of nature that's, evolving in a causal manner. Yeah, which but, eventually gives but, rise but it to has nothing to do with awareness. <laughs> yeah, no, we can, the, the we laws can, of nature. In other words, to to control everything, it seems logical if 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 the universe is going to control itself, which is everything, it has to be aware of itself. It's no. I, I, um, it's, it's uh, not really controlling nuanced. itself. It's it's, more... it, all it is is just causal, in fact, flowing yeah. through yeah. a yeah. physics can of I, inter- can I say some? I, I just want to say something real quick. I know that I know how it sounds, and I know how because I've been in hundreds of, of conversations like this, and I know that it sounds like we're projecting, we're anthropomorphizing the universe and and nature. I understand that's exactly how it sounds. All right. I'm saying is I'm not giving, um, I'm not giving consciousness and cognitive awareness to the universe right now, I'm saying there was some form of consciousness that initiated the whole thing and the process itself, which is taking place on every level, I'm saying it's embedded, it's eminent, it's in I, all matter, all I'm energy. I'm saying there's no evidence Moving. for that either, either it's, scientifically I'm, I'm giving you the evidence. The, the evidence is the evidence is the existence of life itself. It's moving towards that's greater not and greater state. That's not greater a, we, and greater. We, we know that life itself it ca- yeah. is through a causal process of evolution that is that has, that does not need consciousness. You're saying it needs, I, if, if it needs direction, it, need, it needs consciousness. It doesn't. In listen, other words, listen, like, doesn't, doesn't, ev- evolution, you know, serves survival. Survival is an intent. It's programmed. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. It doesn't need consciousness right now because consciousness is emergent. It's Let, programmed. Let's, let's put it, it this way: evolution the, isn't about survival. For, for one thing, that that's a, that's wrong. Evolution is not about survival. For for example, most most creatures have died in evolution, and and the ones that survive just pass on their genes. Evo- but it's not about ever, it's not about thing, like things consciously. It is about, about survival. Them. Some of them don't succeed, but that oh, doesn't mean yeah. that it's still not about it. They pass, on, they, they pass on. They pass on their genes. Your uh, right there. It's about re- reproduction. There's, hold on. There's a contradiction here. You just said that uh, survival is a form of intent, right? Yes. What evidence do you have that the universe or like gravity is trying to survive? Like, so you, you're attributing this idea of survival and intermingling right. it with no intent. survival yes, is relative to to living. Because things. survival shows intent, right? Survival shows it. We can say, oh, if something is trying to survive, yeah, but the vast has, majority it, of, of right. life on the planet did not survive, and it that's why. It <laughs> can I, can I answer that? That, that doesn't that, mean it doesn't intend to survive. I want to answer yes, that. Yes. I want to answer there's that. There's no intent. Go ahead. Trick. Trick. That life that existed experienced the existence of living, and it and it passed on its genes. It passed on its it, information. It did if it was conscious, it on, like like it plants. On its, I don't think plants, plants have consciousness, so I don't think they experience anything. Plants have pl- plants are absolutely uh, aware. I disagree. And, and, and I disagree. On a certain level, the studies have been shown, man. We're no, not they talking haven't. about it, it doesn't Only work pseudoscience the same. has been shown. It doesn't work the same <laughs> yeah. way our brains work. Plants are what plants are conscious. For example, when the sun is a certain in a certain Why? part of the sky, they will like cy- a cycle pro- a photo. So it does a solar power. I can get a solar panel that does the same thing, George. So, but but, but that doesn't mean that the plant isn't conscious. Just because like something that artificial can do the same thing. We can, can think a computer can beat us. Does that mean we don't think? Reason. The same reason that plants saying, reach their roots the, down the into the, the soil conscious. to get 
to get water. The same reason they they direct themselves toward this. The same reason they they have photosynthesis and they do everything that they do because there is a level of awareness. There's like a level of sentience that's there. I'm not saying that that it's got a brain and a mind that can communicate in complex, uh, you know, cognitive ways that like the way we think in abstraction. But everything on its in its own way is is aware. Everything. Well, Otherwise, it would do what it does. There's no reason to think that is what we're saying. Yeah. Uh, if if you want to think that, then you should just be at least be agnostic on on that. You should just say, I'm saying I don't that know I can't not. I can't not think that, dude. I can't not think that because that's exactly what we observe. There, that isn't what we observe. There's there's no there's no. There's no yes. way you can come you to that think, conclusion through what we what we observe. Because you're making because you're Trip, making a you were you were you were saying that a plant that is not makes, aware of sunlight. Come aware. on, of course it's aware of sunlight. The sun no, is aware. There's, the there's, sun there's is aware a of there's a chemical aware. reaction that takes plants pla- place within a plant that causes it to turn towards what do you the think sun. A and and, and trick and trick with, with with human consciousness, you can make that same argument. It's really just these particles responding in a very Except bio we that, that miracle, have, neurological have, way. Have things such as qualia and consciousness. We we, we understand yeah. that they can think. We understand that they can do mathematics. We understand but you're just that arguing they... for complexity. No, it's not, you're not arguing. What, this for, is what for, consciousness for, is. No, 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 no. consciousness no. is awareness. Com- complexity is like. And like for example, self awareness. Awareness level of awareness is a so mental state. There, there, yeah. there, there's no need it's to say that. Nothing. No, that that's an anthropocentric concept. In other words, just like for example, intelligence. I mean, like intelligence. A lot of people would used to describe it just to human beings. Now we understand. Oh no, like the lower animals are. Then your quote, computer quote, is. God's you're saying your computer is uh, conscious, right? Um, yes, it yes. Is, I mean, like this is this AI is like. Is. Wait, your computer is conscious? Absolutely. It is becoming, it's, it's, it is becoming oh, self-aware. Huh? It's, an, it's an artificial program that we've created. So you, it's conscious nature. of your input. If you're, if you're clicking these things, it's nature. conscious of that. So you think that the, uh, so then you're using a different brain. definition of conscious. Yes, and a more expanded, but, but no, a more no, accurate I mean, definition. I mean the definition that, that, that is, is useless, basically. That's it's not anthropocentric. That, that's more genuine, more more generalized. It makes it so you we can't even use the word conscious, computer. basically. No, it, ma- it makes <laughs> it that we have to apply this it to everything. This is becoming semantics. It sounds I, like we're just yeah. arguing about the definition right. of a word. <laughs> Yeah. So semantics, it, semantics is there, in the way. Semantics the absolutely get ex, 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 Exactly. Do, so is there a way? Is is there a way in which we can come to agree on something? Because there's just I, I don't agree, agree with you. I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Right. Here's why I don't agree with you. How about this? How about this? Can we agree that rocks don't think? Just just thinking. Can we agree that they don't think? Sure. Um, they don't, okay, okay. They don't think, that's, but that's they respond one. to their environment. They break. How do you find? We're not going there yet. Can we How are you defining thinking? Can How are you defining thinking or desire? I, no, I couldn't claim that because, like, the chemical structure okay, of a rock binds it together. Yeah, hold there's, on. There's hold no on, reason on. to think a yeah, rock wants or desires anything. George, George, you said that your computer was it a wants word, to be a right? rock. It, it wants right. to be a rock. That's why it's a rock. There's no you reason just, to think that it wants to be a rock. There's no thing. That's it, why it's a rock. A, that's the whole reason why it's a rock. When, because when, that when, particular when someone puts you in, under anesthesia, is, you go unconscious. That doesn't mean you want or desire anything. You you forget everything until they wake you up. Yeah. And, and, and all time passes. You you don't even realize that an hour has passed. Well, we can't even say wait, wait, that. We can't even say that because we don't know what unconscious processes are happening. I want to say something. I want to say something. Do you do you agree or disagree that nature is alive? It's a living system. What I'm saying is, it's a living system that is unconscious and is operating sort of on on autopilot, which is allowing evolution to occur. I'm Things saying that the program is alive. We have, we have a definition of live. Like in terms of science, like actual science, like we're we're monitoring awareness for certain reasons. Like for instance, right now there are a bunch of robotics engineers who are concerned about this idea of what that robots could gain. Awareness, sentience. Right. If you completely disregard that, then it's an arbitrary conversation to have. But what we say when we say they're not aware or conscious is they don't seem to be able to, they don't have their own goals or intents. They're really bending under our goals, our intents, sure. right? Right. So yeah, that's it's, a, good, it's a good point. It's a good point. And what I'm trying to say is that this intention and this this awareness of this this tele this teleological perspective that I'm that I'm offering, 
I'm saying that it came before the Big Bang itself. It's the it's a totality. I'm saying it's a in a much more general sense. I'm not saying each individual specific thing has okay. its own desires and will. I'm saying that the underlying principle behind why everything is doing what it's doing came from a, an, an intention, came from an initial first cause. Yeah, there's Papa, no, let me explain, no, Papa, hold on. Hold on, let me explain what thing. Papa is saying. Let me f explain what Papa is saying. For example, whether it's a human being or a thing, let's say you have 100 dominoes, all right, and the 99th causes the, 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 the 100th to tumble, to tumble, right? It if somewhere. it was a human being, if it was a human being, we'd be saying, well, yes, that 99th consciously, whatever, caused it to tumble. What Papa was saying is that, like, Consciousness is irrelevant to that event because you have to go to the beginning of that that whole series of dominoes to determine why everything after it happened. And and there's no reason to think that whatever started the very big the very first domino was conscious. Can I answer that? Can I answer that, please? Can I answer that right now, really quick, very <laughs> quickly? It's so simple. Okay, everything that exists in the known universe. The potential for it to, to exist, the programming, the laws of nature, the potentiality existed in the singularity that existed before the Big Bang. That's the reason. I'm saying it was all there, packed into that little tiny pinpoint smaller than the size of an atom. The entire fucking universe was there in, 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 in terms of potential. So how can you say that on the other side of the Big Bang? Po potential there was doesn't no mean it's there. It just it just yeah. means that energy was there. It just yeah, means that well, the I mean, energy the energy was the energy was energy. compressed. Every, it, does, it, doesn't mean is, that, it doesn't mean that 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 energy knows that it's going to expand out into a universe that's going to have conscious creatures. Why did it expand? Not just why, why, why how? Any of it happen? Why we would don't any know of it that. Happen? It, Great it, question. It, We're it cosmologists and astrophysicists and theoretical physicists are trying to figure that out. All right, well, but we could say that order, order is what uh, controlled or governed that process. Order is that. an intelligent. There's, there's no reason to conclude that. Order, yeah, order actually, as opposed to disorder. In other words, this, the universe is orderly. The laws of nature ca causality exhibit itself order. Is just order. It's just ca that's what causality is. It, it's, it's cause and effect, which is ordered. But it's I mean, not good. Uh, trick, the laws of nature are way beyond ca cause and effect. Cause and effect is simply the mechanism by which the laws of nature what, whatever, take place. Whatever the laws of nature the laws are of much nature more complex the same deal. than causality. It's the same deal. Whatever causes the laws of nature is the same deal as any other thing in, in well, the What universe. I'm saying, you're simplifying it by uh, referring to causality. What I'm saying, causality is just a mechanism. If you take all the different laws of nature, that's there's a complexity. You, that's there's a all complexity. you need is the, No, I, see, I, it's complexity theory is what creationists use. You don't need you don't need to the laws say of that nature, gravity, electron. We can't figure it out. What are you kidding? There's so many laws. There's physical we, laws. There's, we come there's out of we, laws. Angles, but we know we that out. complexity wanna... complexity gets arises through causal right. structures. It's we don't. Right. We, it's it doesn't need and it's an orderly process. That's what we're it saying. Need consciousness. It doesn't need intent. It doesn't need wants or desires. It doesn't need any of that. I'm Order. Trying, I just want to say something. That all I'm saying is you cannot have. A, a creation that's like bigger than the creator, so to speak. And I'm sorry to use that theological language, but just think about yeah, this for a, a second. A you creation. cannot have you, you cannot have you cannot have an effect, okay, that is greater than that that has more potentiality than the cause. Like to every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Like I don't understand how this that's, is so. That's not true. I mean, we, like, a, 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 a fusion in the star is very complex, yet. It's through the mechanism of compiling all the different atomic structures that led to that fusion in the star. Right, right. And your, your it point? doesn't mean that anything needed to be more complex or anything like that. To I, 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 let me let me give another example. What happens when you split an atom? When you break a chemical bond, you have a TNT explosion. What happens when you break an atomic bomb? All the power and potential and energy is all within. It's within the atoms themselves. It's right. already there. That's, That's what I'm saying. Energy it's release. It's just what energy release. Yes. Where, where is that energy coming from? That energy is coming from somewhere else. It's coming from like empty space is not is not the nothingness is not nothing. What I'm saying is like the dark matter, the dark energy, the singularity. Okay, it's, like it's everything atomic came energy, from that. and it's part of it's part of our universe. It's just, it's part of the energy in the universe. I right, I know, I know it is, but I'm asking you that what does it what does it do? What does it bring about? What ends up happening through through the laws of, of nature, through electromagnetism, through gravity, through strong and weak nuclear force, through entropy, through uh, you know um, electro you know the, the fusion the, the the nuclear fusion that's going on, the radiation it always brings about conscious life. 
So that it was the, that's no, it doesn't. There's, there's, uh, there's, there's, I don't know there's how you came to that conclusion. Stars that that that, that <laughs> don't have planets that have conscious life. Of course, I mean, of course, we're the only a, one that we know of, as a matter no, of fact. No, no, no. Eight point eight billion in the Milky Way alone, Earth-like planets. Okay, we're the only one that we know of because we're the we're we're further away in a linear time time sense to get to them. But the, the, because the laws of nature are are immutable, they're in effect everywhere. That's the point. Is that because no, we, we those don't laws? Know that. We don't know that. Well, we, come on. That's our best knowledge trick. It's we don't speculative. know anything. No, no, Everything the, is a the, guess. The, come on. That's, I'm that's saying. I'm saying the same thing that's happened on this planet has happened trillions of times in other planets. And there's other evolved species that are further along, and they're and they're further behind us. That's, and that's I'm saying that, as well. That's that, speculative. The trick. That's everything just by your definition yeah. is speculation. Come on. I, I feel, I feel you like you can't I prove like, to me that you exist. I don't feel like according this is logic, to your logic. I don't feel like this is no, no, logic. Actually, those are axiomatic, but it's not. I don't, it's, I don't feel, feel like this is logic. I feel like it's there. because there's a there's a. I, th I think that, I think what, one thing that's axiomatic is the laws of nature. Yeah, but but you gotta understand. Okay, how many how many. Uh, billions of years did it take before consciousness arose on our planet? It doesn't planet. matter. It doesn't matter the time frame. It's it's the experience. No, and it's from, the, end from the time the from the time of of judging it. No, it's judging, and I can plans. say how far how far out in space. I can make your argument for you, dude. I've I've heard a million times. How far out in space? How many billions of light years where there is no life? How much how much empty space and vacuum is we, there out we there? We don't that know how negate. difficult it was for a reproducing molecule to ever uniform. <laughs> Okay, so so we, we can't even speculate on that. It's, it's it possible did. that there's trillions point, and trillions of planets, it, or there's possible that, that there's not. We don't know. Well, it's either way, it's probable that there are. It's, 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 it's not about that's, possibility, it's about probability. It, that's what no, science there's, is. There's no real probability. There's, that's, 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 same, oh, come the on. Same, that's, 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 the same laws. The same think... laws that are in effect are, are in effect everywhere. So why wouldn't it produce uh, a habitable planet? And, and even if the life evolved in some other way, that it, that it wasn't uh, carbon based, maybe it was anyway, silicon based. Let, let's just say know? it did. It, uh, it is an ontological, ontological possibility, but it doesn't necessarily mean it has happened. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's the point. But hey, well, I, I got to say something. This is all. I, I want you to know. This is what I believe. But when it comes to pre Big Bang intelligence and and our future extrapolation where where we're headed that's that's all i can do is e extrapolate and, and speculate this is all speculation but, but even if there's trillions and trillions and trillions of, of planets of life it doesn't mean that there's anything before the big bang that had intent of oh that. my god why would it why would it have happened if there was not the intention because for it it's to just a causal process <laughs> it's or just a, we just it's don't it's know why the mechanism production is a brother and that's like, production is a trick because you don't want to say that is what describes everything but describe causality does not uh, relate to intent to causality is limited to mechanism it has nothing to say about intent how about i don't right. know i agree it has nothing to say about intent can I ask yeah. you a question? Right. Can I ask you a question? Like, what, for what, causality. Would, what would happen? Trick, what, what, would you, what you're saying is like you can't negate intent with causality because causality applies to everything. No, no, no. I'm saying you don't require intent to have causality. And all you need is causality for complexity. That's all you need. Why does causality exist in the first place? There why is do, no why. why? There's, the there's, there's no. There's no reason for you to put that why on there. You know what? You know what? I, 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 um, I take, I take umbrage with this. Okay, I'm a human being who has the ability to think and reason and ask these questions. So for you to say to me, and I'm not offended or anything, okay. but I'm just saying, for anyone to say that we don't have a right to ask why when we have the ability to ask why. No, the fact that I have the ability to ask why tells oh, me that I, that I was okay. why, why Can we I, calm down just a little I'm, bit? I'm, you, I'm calm. I'm cool. <laughs> okay, because there's a little bit of an uh, 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 anger in there. I can yeah. sense no, no, no. it. Yeah, no, no, no. Hey, anger, hey, anger is the path passion. of the dark side. Anger is the path of the dark side. <laughs> Listen, don't mistake my passion. Hey, hey Papo, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying, angry. I all I'm saying, angry. Papo, is that Just why passionate. questions are sometimes wrong-headed questions. But, why but, is, but come on, in science, trick, science is full of why questions. No, they're, they're mostly full of how questions, how this That's came exactly about. Why? Why? Semantic. It's no, semantic. No, no, it's not no. semantic. Why? why because why? they're not asking the philosophical questions. They're only, they're only, they're only trying to explain the mechanism, and they're not asking the, the philosophical question of what so, started so the, the hard problem of consciousness, for example, I think is a wrong-headed question. And, and, that's, and that's a why question. Why, why do we have, you know, qualia and, and all this consciousness? 
I, I think it's a wrong-headed question. We just do have it. It's 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 just what caused well, we a, progress. That's a stance. That's just a that's just a reductionist materialist. Um, you know, basically that's that's just uh, an atheist stance. Are, that's are you? Well, it's a reductionist. Not, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Are you not a, trick, are you let me not frame a it in this way. Trick. Let me frame it in this way. You're just a presenting. You're that's presenting a standard scientific. Um, interpretation of why, or of, of, of the, there doesn't have to be a why, the science doesn't address why, right? <laughs> but but hey. hold on, hold on, but it just what, what, oh, come on, but okay. what, I, I what agree. supersedes, what supersedes science is logic, okay? And logic deals with why. Okay, so yeah, well, but, but, does, but there's but some why questions that it can't okay. deal with. It's impossible. Yeah, I, I, I partly we're not talking about every why. We're talking about the ones we're talking about. Yeah, and why right. and why the universe happened is not a question that's answerable. No, so, fine, so this be fine, solved. but this this is, solved. it is a valid it, question. I, I, can, oh, I have oh. to interject. I think it is answerable. There's when a, we look and we observe, when we look at the universe, that's why. Everything you see is why. That's why. Hold on, There's a solution here. There's a solution here. Hold on, hold on, just real quick. So, ahead, uh, so I I partially agree with Trick, but not completely. I'm completely fine with your why questions, but the fact that you're asking why shows that you don't know. It shows, you know, why is it? I don't I don't know why it is. Maybe it's because it's of something that was conscious. Maybe it isn't. The Quaid, fact that no, you're no, Quaid, why, in other words, like, why don't we have free will? We could ask that, and we can also answer that. Let, let me put I, the, I, well, no, the why, some white questions are definitely answerable. I'm not saying white questions are not answerable. What I'm saying is, I can, comes I can, from the experience. We're wanting I to, can, it's the experience you, of learning I can, it. I can say why questions endlessly. So, so I, I can say, why did the universe st start? You could say, because uh, some intent thing caused it. And I'm saying, well, why did that intent thing start and then you'd have to answer that why question and we can have an infinite regress of why questions. I don't, but i don't it stops dude i already I'm, I'm trying to tell you like i've already explored this the reason why is for the 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 consequence the result what has what actually transpired it's for the sake of experience it's the for the sake of novelty it's for the sake of learning that's why no reason, the universe there's exists. no reason to conclude that there's no reason to conclude there's, the that, conclusion that, that is, is com the conclusion comes from the fact that that is what's actually happening and transpiring right now no it's it's presupposing when you say for the sake of you are automatically presupposing your conclusion so what you're saying is the effect has nothing to do with the cause i'm saying I, it's not what? for the sake of something and uh, i'm an saying effect, i'm saying that the cause and has effect a cause it doesn't same. do it for the sake of the cause <laughs> it just it's just cause and effect a, a domino hitting another domino doesn't do it for the sake of hitting that other domino it just does it because of gravity etc why does anything do anything, dude? That's the point. I'm saying Great it's question. doing it's doing everything that it's doing for the for when you want to know what it, why it's doing it. Look at the something wants it look to at, do it. Look there at the need, action. Look there at the no, outcome. There needs to, look at the outcome. No, there doesn't need to be any why or any or well, any in your, in your philosophy or any maybe because want. you don't want to you don't want to maybe believe whoa, in whoa, 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 whoa. Be careful not to assume what other people desire. I, but I've been want. I've been having this conversation with you for 20 minutes and I and I I'm saying it's it appears to me this is this is an observation that uh -huh. that that you don't want to concede that there might be an intelligence that initiated everything. I mean, the, whether, at, whether at there best, might, at best, whether there might be or not is is not the question. There might be. There might that's be really, whatever. That, that's really that, your logic. You're, you're you're coming to this conclusion based on logic or based on the on the predisposed um um. I'm saying, saying, I'm that saying you don't, there's nothing. Don't want to believe in a, in a There's no way God. you can conclude logically or scientifically either one of your conclusion that I there like, is. I feel like it. Absolutely no, the trick, the the, the the logical evidence for that is your intelligence. You don't your have own a free existence. will. That is your not intelligence is evidence. not yours. I, Actually, I, that's I, the I evidence. The existence of everything that exists. The existence of everything that exists how is my, the evidence. My existence happened without the need of invoking a thing at the Big Bang. That you are a that. puppet. You are a puppet. You don't have any intelligence. Any intelligence you express, <laughs> you're manifesting the, the intelligence free, free of language. whatever is making everything happen. It's not the intelligence of that. <laughs> it is. It's everything you do. That, that, not, that, that comes about through I know, a cause I, I agree. Process. Listen, is that Logan trick, or not, the, the, No, the, that the was trick. I'm Logan. Universe, I, the laws I of the universe control emerging. everything. Emerging. We control is nothing. Is it doesn't control something. anything in, in any in any conscious or intentful sense. It controls everything in the most that we know. general 
and 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 salient of ways. In other words, I, what I he agree, wants to happen I happens. Come on, I agree, Queen, I help me out I here. Actually, I actually disagree with George. I think he is more of a panentheist than a pantheist in some sense because he kind of sees it like as order and control. I actually believe that the universe is unconscious. And what you keep saying, Trick, is that that intelligence and intention is an emergent quality, an emergent property, which I agree with you. But right. all I'm saying is the fact that the universe exists itself, at the very least, leads to the, to the concept of, of deism, that there was that, an initial cause. That's a, that's that's a non sequitur. Uh, there's, no, there's no logical uh, the connection logic between exist. the, logic is the that universe initiated. existing and the universe existing because of X. At least, okay, no, there's no uh, guys. We're, we're, we're arguing what logic yeah. can't tell us. In other words, like because of the infinite regress, we can't ascribe, you know, a creative point to everything. But, so, I, but I, I feel like I can't. We can, we can ascribe, creative. we can ascribe qualities to the evolutionary process of the universe. In other words, yep. if the universe yep. evolved in a certain way. These laws of nature are guiding it, controlling it, making it do what it does. But, but we know that evolution, evolutionary theory doesn't need a, an intent. As a matter of fact, that, that's the whole point of evolutionary that's, theory. Evolutionary, evolutionary is, theory is subscribed under the laws of nature. Evolutionary trick, theory Logan? does whatever the, the laws, laws of nature, nature make don't need do. any intent either. Trick, <laughs> that, trick, is that you saying that? Yes. I, I, I agree with you because that's part of the point. The point is to not know the outcome. The point is for life to not know what's going to transpire. It's for the experience of of it of living itself. I agree with you. It doesn't have. It's not predetermined. It's not a. It's not all figured out ahead of time. And and it's like this this plan, like a destiny. It's actually for the sake of experience. That's why oh, I, I, I disagree blind. with you there, Papo. Because blind. like to be everything, you have to know everything. <laughs> I uh, George, listen. I I know why you disagree, and I'm. I'll tell you the reason why we agree and we disagree. Right now, at the same time, okay? Oh because in the Here future, <laughs> in the future, what we are evolving into already it knows everything, and what we are evolving into is where we came from, and it's actually connected. That the the outside of time, that's where this god of myth and legend actually exists. It's where we came from, and it's what we're evolving right. into. I, and what I'm saying is that that nature itself is the unconscious sort of uh, whole experience, the whole body of God, which is evolving back into into conscious into ultimate omniscience. Logan, That's, what's your position on this? Uh, be specific on what? You can, you can disagree <laughs> I, I, with me, but I'm, just as long as you I'm understand. Pantheism. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, would, I want to make sure Tricky asked me the question. What's, on the, on the universe needing like something, some kind of intent. To <laughs> I think about. you and I can probably completely agree on just about everything. So how are you defining intent? How am I defining it? How are both of you defining it? Yeah, because you're saying it doesn't exist. I think you need need some kind of consciousness for intent. I think you need thought for intent. You can't have intent without thought. Can I ask you you guys, did you understand my analogy? (laughs) That that consciousness does not exist now, but it did but in, in before there was t- such a thing as time it, it's what initiated everything that's that's what i'm trying to say is that it doesn't it doesn't exist right now it's it's an emergent property that's now developing and and becoming what it was through all conscious life i'm as long as we, we're clear that you understand that and i'm not saying that that there is a theistic god that exists and is overseeing everything i'm saying that it became the universe to experience everything that the universe and life is experiencing okay it okay. Didn't, it didn't come uh, to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Logan. No, I was gonna say I don't. Uh, you you you've repeated that like a number of times now, but I don't ever come to the conclusion that you're talking about the Christian God or Allah or Vishnu or Thor or any of those other gods based on the fact that you're talking about a god. I, I'm fully aware of pandeism, okay. panandeism, panandeism, sure. pantheism. I'm fully aware of those concepts. I was a pandeist for uh, about a month. Um, I just, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So, that. so essentially, you understand, but for whatever reasons, you've you've let it go. You, you no longer ascribe to it. Yes. Uh, so that's that's fine. I mean, uh, I'm I'm basing this on based on observation. If you have uh, information or knowledge that disproves this, and and you know, um, yeah. Well, it's not. Bring me to not, another conclusion. I like. I, go ahead. Like, let me know. I'd like the burden, to hear burden of proof isn't on disproving it, though. The burden of proof is yeah. on proving it. If you're if yeah. you're making the strong claim that that's the truth. Yeah, and the thing is, the thing is, this is important. This is an important thing because when we're talking about 
uh, you know, when we want to, when we first encounter some some new entity that is an alien, okay, the first question that we're going to ask is, is this thing conscious? Is this does this thing have intention? And there's going to be an assessment process, and it's going to be based on criteria. And so, if everything is conscious, it's arbitrary to even ask that no, because I, everything I already- is. No, I've already I've already said there's levels there's levels of awareness that lead up to consciousness. George probably sees it differently. Like he considers all conscious. It's almost like yeah, yeah. Uh, pan, panpsychism. It's panpsychism. Yeah. I'm not a panpsychist. I just think right. it's a little more nuanced right. than that. Yeah. It's a little more subtle. Yeah, I know. But, but but my point is though, in the same way that there's going to be this long drawn out process that we have with aliens or with possibly robots, that process needs to happen with God and the the people that it's going to happen with probably understand consciousness to just such a, a, an acute degree. And there's going to be a series of tests that I'm not convinced has happened with the universe to, to prove that the universe is conscious in the way that we're talking about. Like, right. if I want to know if an alien is conscious or not, I will give it tests. What tests have you given the universe to show that it's conscious? Well, one I'm thing, not, one, we can, hold I'm on, not, Papa, we can answer that. In other words, like, conscious. let's say we find an intelligent alien or, or an alien that communicates w- with us. One thing we can be absolutely sure of is that that alien does not have a free will. That alien is subject to the same causality, sure. same laws of nature. So whatever we ascribe to it, whether it's consciousness or intelligence or intent, it because it's a puppet, just like we are, it's manifesting that. It is not owning that. Correct. Okay. I just yeah. want to say. Okay. I just want to say. I've never. I never said, and I keep stating that I don't believe the universe is conscious in this present time. I believe that consciousness was what existed before the Big Bang, which initiated it, and I believe that consciousness is an evolutionary, uh, uh, emergent property of nature. Okay. That, that yeah. we're well, it's, it's, the, it's the before the Big Bang one that I, I have. That, that I need the evidence for, I guess. That's fine. Yeah, uh, the, evidence is, the evidence is the entire universe, that everything that exists. I'm everything saying that's that not sufficient evidence. I'm, say, I'm saying it's a non sequitur. Well, make the, trick, the, evidence, the evidence is that disorder cannot lead to order. Order, you know, order has to supersede everything. There has to be a fundamental order. That's not true. I'm, I'm just saying that, that the, is true uh, because the laws the of nature, the laws of nature that govern it, everything, is the, the, the evidence for this order. No, yeah, that's, that's, I'm saying the laws of but nature. But I don't see how that leads to a, a conscious being with intent. Right? No, no, well, that's, not what, not, the, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what happened before the Big Bang. Any you know, intent. We're, Any we're intent. talking about like the, the, there was so order what, what before tests, the Big Bang tests. that had to have led to the Big Bang. Okay, so, so you, want a, you want to yeah. test... To, to you want to test to prove that the universe exists? I'm saying that existence itself is the evidence. Yeah. So what? what just saying well, it doesn't mean it actually is, though. Yeah. I'm no, saying I don't I'm have saying, to say it. You could demonstrate it. Go out and if, look at look at if, the complexity if I said of life. To this, look at okay, how Papa. life evolves to become great, with greater and greater levels what, of self awareness. What if I said this to you? If I said the fact yeah. that 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 everything exists in the universe is evidence for the lack of a god. What if I told you that? That is the same argument you're you're making. I, I kind of know reverse. what you're saying, but then you have to define what, what's your definition of God. What I'm what I'm saying is that God oh, is the sorry. potentiality. You, okay. It's, it's the evidence for the lack of, of intention. Everything. How about that? What if what? I said it's the evidence for the lack of intention? I would I would it, see, it, I would like to understand the logic behind that. The logic is that the universe really exists, exists. That's the that's the that's my reasoning. That's the reason you're giving me. That's why I can't accept it. I know, I know, but I don't, but I don't understand the logic of what you're saying that something Ex- exists. That's exactly without, where we're having a problem. That's the point. That's the point. That's I mean, the point. Yeah. Is, is, all I'm is, saying, all I'm saying is the cause argument. is in the the cause is in the effect. The effect is in the cause. I'm saying they're the same. The, the, when, when you look at the effect and what has transpired, you see what the cause was. You see that, see that everything intent. that exists I don't see had any the, intent. the potential for it to exist was was already in that singularity. So but I see, I see a rainbow, but I don't see a leprechaun placing gold at the end of the rainbow. Go, oh no, come on, God, trick. How are you defining intent? I, I think intent needs uh, a conscious process of either thought or um, some kind of experience. <laughs> can I can I just ask a question? Where do you think evolution is taking all of life? 
it's taking, I don't think it's taking it in a certain direction. I just think it's do, going along a process. That's not, it. Not okay. the direction is complexity. What is that process? process. What is that process bringing You're about? Like I know complexity. it's not specific. It's not. I know it's not species. I know it's not specific to each species. I'm saying just the general overall process of evolution. Why is evolution? Okay, I'm not going to ask. Life is getting understand. more and more complex. That's, that that's is the what direction. I'm that's life the direction is, no, it's it's not, going. No, it's not. Is exactly. Yes, it is. Life is moving to consciousness. It's moving back to complete and total uh, omni, omni uh, present awareness. That's exactly no, where life is. Well, happening. no. I don't if think we, I if we, got that. If we turn, like, in, the, in a million years from now, if everything on the look planet. At, look at what life is doing. If via evolution everything on the planet turned to the the same thing as moss, basically, that would still be the evolutionary process. It doesn't necessarily mean that. Sure. And on another planet, and we're not talking planet, about what's dark, necessary. We're talking another, about what's evident. In, evident in another, is like we go galaxy. from single organism, single cells yeah. to this complexity. That's a, a movement from simple to the more complex. There's no reason for it, though. Is what I'm saying. You, I mean, the reason for it, it's its own. It's, it's, in it's, other words, it's like own there's reason. a reason. It's, there is a reason why evolution is doing that. There's a causal reason. That. That's it. There's a causal reason, but there's no there's no intentional reason. The the intention is the outcome. Whatever whatever is happening, is the reason why it's doing. It's not doing it consciously. I'm saying. Uh, all, all this stuff was set in motion. I'm saying the programming was all there. It's all in the laws of nature. That's what I'm saying. It's in the laws of nature themselves to, to bring the, about The laws this. of nature don't have knowledge about anything that's going to happen within the universe. Trick, that's in, exactly in terms my of point. intent. That's why it's happening. In, in terms of it's intent, the only, thing we can, the only thing we can really um, logically attribute intent to, and again, it transcends logic, is the the being or, or whatever it is that set everything in motion. Oh, 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 I, I understand that that transcends give, logic, but everything analogy? else, everything there's, else is manifesting that quote unquote intent. Can I give there's you an no analogy? reason to even gonna, say that that, wanna, even if we a, had a being that had, that, that had you don't intent. have an intent because you, cause you look, don't have a free look, will. George, even if we had an, a being that had intent that created the universe, that being wouldn't have free will either. So what, Trick. what, what Trick. intended that being to ha happen? Uh, well, no, no, that's a good question. Sure. Why wouldn't that uh, being have free will? Because that free will is logically that, impossible. That being is to only, human beings. Wait a minute. Why? Is, why is it logically impossible for? Because for then, the then you're saying self. You're saying contradictions can happen, and that's even more if problematic. You're a, if you're in a you're hospital go there. bed, if you're in a hospital, <laughs> hear this analogy. Just listen, guys. Hear this analogy. If you're in a hospital bed and you're in a coma, okay, and then I'm I'm checking your vitals and you're unconscious. But like say you're responding, like your vitals are, are responsive and I'm, I'm tapping on your finger and I'm tapping your knee and I draw some blood. The blood flows and, and you're observing. We are like observing the unconscious uh, reactions of the universe. That's, that's what we're observing and what I'm saying is it's Other unconscious. Sure. It's unconscious right now but what we're seeing are all the, the laws of nature themselves were, are, are already in operation because something initiated it. That's all I'm saying. And so if you want to figure out what that something was, look at what has actually if, come about and transpired. If you and mean by something moving, initiated it that there was a start or, or, or start to the Big Bang or something like that, then yeah, we, we can say that. Or we can say that there's an infinite regress. Or we can say that there was an a-causal event that's, that caused the Big Bang. Or there's a number of different solutions. We could say that, that there was a multiverse and, and we came through a yeah, black hole of another, another universe. You say all that and then you, go, and you keep going back and back and back and back. All I'm saying is – All of it requires is, intent is, is the point. I'm saying look at the, the trajectory and I know evolution is not – it's not. It's a blind process, like a, like tree branches uh, or roots, like in a fractal sense. It just branches out. It stops. It starts. The, it, you know, animals die off. Animals uh, survive. Some are more successful than others. I'm saying the entire process itself, what it brings about, is greater and greater levels of awareness. And so, if it's moving toward awareness and something initiated it all, and everything that exists and the laws of nature already have the potential to to, to create this. Then that potential already existed before the Big Bang. That's just logic, man. But when logic. you say potential, you're, you mean it in the sense of potential energy, not not in the sense of potential intent. Those are two potential, separate things. Potential in the sense that the that the, the potentiality of the law that the laws of nature would would continue to to continue to exist and do what they do. They're doing what they're what they're 
programmed almost to do. It's like the latent memory of, of what it's supposed to be. And what it's supposed to be is a cohesive form. And it's experiencing the, the, the reality, the experience of being a physical matter, being a heavier vibrational uh, frequency. See, there's not no, being there's energy, no not latent light. memory is, is the problem. You, you I'm, I'm, using, I'm using words. I'm using words to uh, try and help you understand this. You don't have to call it that, but what you would, what I call the latent memory of, of the omnia, you would call the laws of nature. That's that's all I'm saying is the laws of nature are bringing about conscious life, and I'm saying that there cannot be conscious life and all the potentiality for everything that exists if all that potential did not already exist in the singularity. I mean, Lawrence Krauss says it. Quantum fluctuations, you know, the nothing it was not nothing. There were quantum fluctuations, and this, to me, is literally just the ideas, whether it's going to go this way or but, that but, way. But and, let's and say you're right matter, on that, even though, even though we could argue that point. We could, matter beats actually, we could actually matter. argue that point. Dark energy holds it together. I mean, dark matter holds it together. Dark energy is pulling it all apart because there's a push okay. and pull. Even though we, we could argue that point, let's, let's, let's say you're right. Okay, let's say you're right, and all the potential of the universe is in one singularity. Okay, That's what exactly does that what mean? That does help. not mean anything about intent. There's there's nothing about intent there. Oh, but no trick, all right. What 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 we can say about intent is because like we don't have a free will. What we quote unquote intend is not ours, and that and that's the crucial point. If it's not ours, to whom or what do nope, we ascribe nope. it? That's that that question doesn't. The second question isn't needed. It's just that the intent was fine. Ours. Then you're defining you're defining reality as a what. I'm defining it as a whom. So, but that's I, I a semantic just say, thing. I'm I saying just intent say only applies to us. Uh, intent I just want to say what made it explode. It applies to us because we're we're higher life forms. We're conscious. And it's, it's not our intention. Exactly. We're puppets. Puppets don't have intention. We don't have any more intention uh, than causality, a puppet. Causality leads to intention. It's it's actually intention is actually part of the causal process. I know, but it's not our intention. And in you're saying that human beings intend, but the universe doesn't. No, human beings do not and, intend. You know, human this, this human hour, beings manifest uh, the intention uh, of the universe. The hour thing is is irrelevant. You could say that the, the intention thing, is with, within area. the brain state that happens. Okay. The brain state has intentions, and that so, causes so the next brain, part. So let me ask you a question. So what you're saying is you can only you can only have um, cognition and a volition and intention and and the ability to think and, and be sapient and, and sentient if you have the the few pounds of gray matter that we have in I, our I'm heads. I'm saying all the the evidence that we have points to a brain and a central nervous system as key components to. I, but those things that you just mentioned. No, no, I agree. I agree. That's exactly what is required. I disagree, but wait a minute. There's, there's something saying, that's intending that we I'm saying, intend. I'm, say, I'm, saying, I'm saying that consciousness through brain matter, okay, is a very primitive way of bringing about consciousness. I'm saying that there will eventually be pure consciousness, nothing but consciousness, and then you have what existed before the Big Bang. It's just a cycle. That's exactly what existed before the Big Bang, and it's what we're all evolving into. That's my whole point. But there's no reason to say that that's, that's intention. Uh, use whatever word you want. I don't have to use the word intention. I, I mean, you could just. I'm saying this is the trajectory. But this trick, is, trick. This is if you're saying if you're what's saying happened? the universe doesn't have intention, then you're also saying that human beings don't intend. That's not true. Uh, that's, it is true no, because, like, our secular. intention, our quote unquote intention, is an illusion. Our intention is simply the manifestation. Of the laws of that, nature that, that, that's operating like saying, in a causal manner. That's like saying our consciousness is an illusion. It, it, that's it not is. True. It's no, not saying, our consciousness. The, our, the idea of our consciousness, quote unquote, our is an illusion. It's not he's ours. Gonna, he's making the point about free will, saying that you know it's it's because there's no free will that we're doing it because it's our physiological, um, you know, uh, imperative that that we're we're following we, the. What's already been for example, with, act, with actions, it's easier. With actions, the actions of a puppet are no more the actions of that puppet than our actions are ours. We can apply that to consciousness and intent. No, the actions actually, I mean, we act in the world. Right, but they're not our actions. In other words, like the, a puppet acts, we, we, we don't are, say, oh, yeah. We, we I, are I wanna, caused to act. We are I know, caused, that's what I'm saying. We are caused to have intent. So we don't, that's what I'm saying. So it doesn't, but like, so it doesn't a seem like A puppet doesn't arguing. act of its own. The, a puppet's say, actions aren't its its own. Our, our intentions aren't its our own. That's what I'm let, saying. They don't belong to us. Can I say something? We were caused to have intent doesn't mean our intentions on our own 
I yes, it does. Yeah. I, you I mean, you're, 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 you're yeah. arguing for yeah. fundamental responsibility. Our, our just, actions, our just intentions. Just because causality leads to our finger doesn't mean that it's not our finger. <laughs> but are you, are we're talking about action versus being. In other words, yes, we are who we are, but what we do is not up to us. Yeah, but intentions is a conscious state is what I'm saying. When, but when intention an, is an action. It's not a, a, a statement no, an, an of being. No, an action is a physical action. I just I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even go to the free will stuff. I think that all George is saying is that since it all it all traces back to the first cause. I think that's what he's that, that we have well, no free will. Which, which is as far as we know, know, as the, as the as we know is a ham past. sandwich. We don't we don't know what the first what? cause is. What? The first yeah, I mean, the first, the first cause, cause is, is, is no no is no no uh, everything. Papa, yeah. I yeah. think we have to what we have to concede and agree is like this idea of a first cause it transcends logic. You know, the, uh, the same logic that argues for same cause argues for an eternal regress. I, don't I just think mean, any, I don't I, think anything transcends logic. I think I, I think, just mean I just mean that literally the Big Bang occurred, and all I'm saying is something initiated the Big Bang, and what I'm saying is once you follow the trajectory of everything that's transpired and the way that evolution is bringing life and nature. To, to higher and higher levels of consciousness, how is it not logical to – you don't even have to assume that, that where it's headed is where it came from. It had to already have the potential in it in order it's, for this to, to, to happen the way that it's happened because you're talking about outside forces. Then outside forces outside of the universe had, had to be pushing and pulling evolution, and I'm saying that it's within the universe itself. It's within nature itself. Why are you do saying what, that – uh, Papa, why are you saying yeah. that where it came from is where it's heading? I don't understand that part of it. Um, he's a pantheist, so he's kind of, that's his perspective on it. I'm actually, I mean, I I'm a bio I'm a biopantheist, and pantheism is my explanation for our origins. Yes, but what I'm I believe that I believe that this is the, this is the whole point that nature itself, okay, is a living being in the totality of existence. All of nature, the universe, is a living being, and at this moment. During this time, in this time frame, it's unconscious and it's evolving to wake up and become conscious. And I'm saying that that's what it's becoming and that's what initiated it all because for the sake of experience, to experience the novelty, to learn, to, to, to educate, to experience life itself, that's why it's it, – so, it, so you're it, saying it's unconscious yet it's, it has the intention to uh, get conscious. It, it had, yeah. The intention to become conscious was before the Big Bang, but the only way that that, that was infinite, before the Big Bang. So, so it was yeah. conscious before the Big Bang. Yeah. Then it's then it's unconscious. Yep. And then and then uh, it wants to become conscious. Not now. Not now. It's already programmed in the laws. It's programmed of to become conscious, but 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 for some reason the intention of the thing made it so billions or billions of years go by with. Um, oh, right. Yeah. 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 No Before, conscious for for no particular sure, reason. <laughs> sure. For no no life no life developed in uh, the dark age of the universe and the bacteria, uh, you know, basically ruled the earth for millions of years. That, yeah, I agree. That's that's exactly the, it's the experience of all these things. But but to those to that experience, it, it, there was no sense of time, so it didn't matter. That this deep time that we're talking about, we can't fathom because we are limited to 80 to 90 years as, as human beings. Well, Papa, I mean, if you're arguing for an initial unconscious, then you, you seem to be arguing for an initial lack of intentionality or lack of order. No, I'm, I'm saying, no, I'm just saying that the physical universe right now as a whole is not conscious. It's differentiated and scattered, and, and, and consciousness is emerging through it through sentient life forms. But, but consciousness is what initiated what? it, and consciousness is where it's headed. Why, and it's doing why, it for would, the sake of why would something conscious go through a process of unconsciousness to, to lead to, to consciousness to, again when it was already conscious? Why, why would it have. It's trick, me, just like answer. we sleep. Why, why would it Please, want to be. Why do you go to sleep? Can I answer, please? I would love to answer this. It's a beautiful question because I think you're actually thinking about it. Even if you're you're just like not taking it seriously, you're thinking in the right direction. Okay. Okay. The yeah. answer to that is, imagine an infinite being that knows everything, is everything, can do anything. It's completely limited by its own its own omniscience. The only thing that that can give it an experience is by letting go, like giving up its omniscience and like forgetting what it is. That's the only way that it can, it's like, like a, you're standing in front of a shelf full of movies you've seen a million times. You, you, there's nothing to watch that you, you already know the end from the beginning. The only way to actually enjoy any of those movies is to like erase your memory and then watch it again and, and have that experience. That's why, why it, life Why would it go through 13 billion years or 14 billion years of, of sure. unconsciousness? 13.8. 
no, 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 because, whatever, whatever, because, to, yeah, it's of the, unconsciousness in order to finally reach the consciousness that it, that it can actually well, experience. Let me, let, we're talking about, <laughs> hold on, hold on a second. We're talking about from our perspective on this planet. It, it's probably happened trillions of times in other in other star systems, and it's probably going to take a million more years in other star systems. It's happening. What? It's happening everywhere. It's just we're What's, we're looking back from our position uh, to the Big Bang. Was this from, being from Earth's was, position? Well, well, obviously it has to go through an evolutionary process and all that stuff, right? It's not, it, but it's not. Remember, it's not actually. It, it's not cognitively, uh, intellectually experiencing being a rock and a mountain and all these things. That's just that's the program. That's the latent memory. That's like a. That's like the 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 body that's unconscious that's just doing what it's doing, and it will eventually wake up. And it, it's, is it, this it, is this first ahead. cause this 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 deity or whatever you want to call it is is it um, all powerful or no? Okay, when are you saying is at it all powerful? The, at the Big Bang, at the start of the Big Bang. Before the Big Bang, Before the it, Big Bang. It, it is all powerful because it's all that there is. Then why it, would it, it go through the bother of all that other stuff? Why wouldn't it just leap right to the because, okay, good because, stuff? Because, <laughs> listen, because, listen I, I, I'll tell you, because, just, because this isn't just the good stuff, because it's also the experience of everything else. It's learning but, what – But the what other stuff is unconscious. Learning, it's learning what it is. The whole thing is unconscious until it gets to, to, to uh, on our planet, until it gets to Homo sapiens and, and cetaceans and, and higher right, so, mammals. So, so it's obviously not experiencing the unconscious part, so why would it even bother with that? Why wouldn't it it's, just it, leap right to the conscious part? Because because it's the process. It's the, the whole point is the process because some things might evolve to become conscious. Other things might just – remain the environment other things might just stay a, a tree or a rock or, or or you know whatever or a mountain and it's, but it, it's but it can't process. experience the process so what's the sense of a process that it can't it is no 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 it is experiencing it's so, so now you're saying that every the, that, no that, listen listen the, that on there a, is experience going on on every level on every level everything is experiencing everything now okay, if you're so, talking so, about on so an then, intellectual then you're changing level, your position back to george's no, it's it's just that it's more it's more subtle than that. What I'm it goes back to what I said. Everything is aware. Everything is aware, and everything is 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 doing what it's doing and experiencing what it's experiencing. And and we like genetically, biologically, are passing on that information and developing that that um sort of collective consciousness that it's going to eventually. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what aware means unless 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 you're conscious. I, if the, it, for the reason for the same reason that like a a rock holds together or or a table stands on a floor or or like water is wet and fire does what it does. That's what I'm talking about. The, the, okay. The, so so it's, the it's that, unconscious the and matter. It's, the way that matter not is aware in any real sense, but the way that matter is responding, the way that all matter and energy is responding to other aspects, to other forms of matter and energy, that's what I'm talking about. That but, the reason it it responds the way it does is because there is a level of awareness there that that allows it to react, react and respond. Think of it as but, chemical. But it, but if you can't experience that reaction, then what's the sense? Why why would the why would that, such a deity do that? Because you you're, you're just you're just um. You're just narrowing it to, to a human experience. That chemical reaction is absolutely experiencing that chemical reaction. Okay, then, then you're saying it is conscious. Then you're not not unconscious. If you if you define it as consciousness, uh, well, a, a experience, yeah. And yeah I mean, anytime you use the word experience, you're, you're yeah, that's that's conscious. Uh, no, uh, hold on. Everything experiences everything else, whether it has like a mind or a brain. It is experiencing being whatever it is. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, I, I think we're going off topic a little. I, uh, no, I get it. You're, you're just trying to fit it into the into the human sort of model of, I, I, of like I'm trying the way to a see, human perceives. I'm the trying way to see what your what your position really is. Like like because at first I thought you were saying everything was conscious. Then you're saying oh just it's just before the Big Bang, and then and then it drives towards consciousness. Uh, Polfo, I kind of put something in the chat. You should read through. I just want to see your take on it. Sorry to interrupt, Trick. No, no problem. And, uh, oh, if you have anything to say, Logan, then, then you should. Uh, I hope you should, don't think uh, I'm dodging, I'm dodging the question. I'm well, trying to answer the question. We're just fundamentally. We're, we're kind of loud here. <laughs> differently. Well, I don't, have, I don't necessarily have anything to say, but I mean, I just have. I just. I remember uh, talking about this with somebody else. It was on pandeism. Uh, there's three schools of thought in pandeism. This is actually from another chat. Um, the scientific pandeist uh, takes the minimal possible approach. The creator or the creator-like action is itself purely a product of scientific processes, and there is nothing super about it, supernatural about it. The uh, universe, the spiritual version, uh, is basically our creator became our universe to actively experience our existence. 
Um, and then radical pandeism is extol- is uh, basically the idea that the being God is an unbearably miserable experience. So God kills itself, and our universe is in a rotting cor- is its rotting corpse. And I was curious, Puffo, if any of those sure. reflected your position. Uh, sure. Like the last two, uh, if you combine the last two um, with with this explanation, that let me see, the spiritual version is it, it came to actively experience. Yes, that's the reason. That's the that's the the purpose to experience everything and then and some pandeists believe that that's um paranormal phenomenon things that that are unexplainable are sort of the potentiality of that of that creator in creation yeah. that's okay. like seeping out seeping out so that that's yet to be determined i'm i'm, I'm not i don't believe i'm not a supernaturalist and i'm i'm totally for um uh investigating exploring paranormal phenomenon but i have no uh, you know specific opinion on that the radical pandeism is told um it says it's bleak. It says God literally kills itself to become the universe, and the universe is the rotting corpse. That is essentially what I believe, but it's not. But it doesn't stay dead. It's it's literally. It, it's more of like it's more of like wiping out your memory so that you can experience life again. That's that's that simple. It's like a total recall. That's all it is. It's not that it. it, it obviously, it did not destroy itself, annihilate itself. That it has no. It has no. Um, no supernal properties, not supernatural, supernal properties, you know, uh, because because its body is becoming is becoming all life and all planets and star systems and, and every all the order that you see is its own body. So it's not that it's just a rotting corpse. It's that it's a unconscious. It's an unconscious process that's now learning and experiencing and doing it literally for the pleasure of, of doing it like like someone that would that knows everything and wants an adventure. And wants to experience what's around the corner, but it already knows what's around the corner. It knows everything. So the only way to do that is to kind of become someone else and, for, and forget who you are and then go through the process of learning it all over again. And that's what it's doing. That's So it's a, it's a um, combination of those last two. All right, Puff, I've got a question because like the, the most fundamental question that I can think of that, that's salient to being a human being is like, why, if, if God, the universe, however you want to define what is, if it's like, let's say, governing everything, and if it's conscious or whatever, just why would there be pain, right? In other words, why, why would a God... Because... Uh, be, I, I got hold on, because, hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. But, but the other part of this is like... Um, no, no, that, that, that's the question. In other words, if, if the universe is, whether it's conscious or unconscious... If it's controlling everything, if it's determining everything that happens, why would it create conditions that it would then have to change? Hey, hey, hey guys, I, I got to go. Yeah. So um, yeah. it was good talking with you, Pafo. Uh, you guys keep at it. Um, yeah, man. I like, I like stay George's stay. question, so I, I want to hear your answer to that when, uh, when Chandler posts I can answer it really fast. Contrast. Because in order to experience pleasure, you have to experience pain. There's no way to experience something unless you, unless you have an absence of it. That's that's the answer. That the, well, the actually, only, I, I would pop, contend, pop, contend oh, wait a minute. Let me challenge that. Let me challenge that. Yeah. Have you ever been dead? I was dead before I was alive, but me. You, know, you have any? You, you have any knowledge of it? Your only knowledge of being yeah. alive, right? So, yeah. you, so like, yeah. just as you can like experience life without ever any recollection of being dead, uh, it, it seems theoretically possible to experience, you know, let's say bliss without any experience of, of anything else. No, 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 I, because I in the, because in the experience, if you only had bliss, if you only had pleasure. If that's all there was, it would no longer be pleasure. It would be hell. It would be the same thing over and over and over. What creates enjoyment is novelty and contrast. That's the whole point. That's why all this happened to begin with because uh, the omnia, the dios, whatever you want to call it, literally had everything contained within it. It was everything. It's all potentiality. Oh, but, but in, in the Buddhist it. tradition, in terms of meditation, what you want to do is still the mind. So there is no motion. So there's the minimal. So like it's this, this peacefulness, sure. this calm I, uh, without activity. I, yeah, the equanimity. I, I disagree with the Buddhist position that we should annihilate ourselves and not experience pain and, and get rid of our desires. That, that's just kind of a, a shortcut way to get rid of the pain is you get rid of the desire. I believe that, that contrast is necessary. I'm not saying – trust me, man. I'm not saying that all the harm and horror and atrocity and pain and everything that, that humans and animals go through – uh, is is I'm not justifying it. it. I have no control over it. It's happening, but I know for a fact that if all I ever experienced was one thing, then I wouldn't appreciate it. You have to have contrast in order to appreciate. Um, it's it's you know the opposite of whatever it is you're, you're desiring. Yeah, but like I mean, you, you've you've never experienced being dead. You appreciate being alive. 
I, I agree uh, with George on I, this. I, I gotta go, guys. So see ya. All right, see you Bye, Trick. Right. Con- contrast is the answer, and what I'm trying to say is that like it literally. You're thinking of it in the wrong way if you're thinking about of it as like a conscious being. If you're thinking of it like a like a like a force, this is what what the evidence shows is that we're literally talking about all infinite possibilities, all possibilities. You want to talk about in quantum mechanics, quantum physics, it's all potentialities existing at once, simultaneously, and the only way for this this experience to actually to be experienced is to choose one of those possibilities, is to separate, to create distinction. You know, if you have a completely a white wall, there's nothing there, so there needs to be a, a distinction between dark and light. And that is literally how the universe began and why it's all, it's, it's split up and scattered and why we're, we're, life forms are, are so diversified and why we have um, the experience that we have of pleasure and pain and, and uh, you know, of, of love and hate and, and goodness and evil it's literally for the process of learning that e- that evil's bad and goodness and love is is desirable and preferable and that's what nature is learning right now and that's what we're doing through all the activist movements and and the evolution of human consciousness that's what it's doing abolishing slavery giving women rights rights to gays and lesbians we are accepting other parts of ourselves and and you know, loving and accepting and recognizing that that distinction and that discrimination and that bigotry and that hatred is is not desirable. That's what nature is doing. Nature is learning morality right now. All right, you're saying that that's the reason for the creation of this quote unquote known universe. But what would be the reason for the existence that preceded this universe? I say that the last part again. Just the last what, part. What would be the rationale for the character of of the universe and what would be the character of the universe that preceded this creation this this known universe i don't understand the question you're asking why is the infinite all why why is the the uh, the pandemic when when you said like uh papa when you when you refer to the you know uh the creation this um this universe being created i assumed you were talking about the big bang that you know like this 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 big bang was created so we could like you know um, understand morality, or whatever. So, like, go back that's before one, that's, that. That's, that's one thing. Go back thing, before it's, that. It's, it's actually the experience of everything. It's the experience of being whatever cosmic gases. I know, no. All right, so whatever, planet. whatever that. But my my question yeah. is like, so you explained, you know, um, why this current, you know, quote unquote, known universe was created. What's your explanation for what the the, the character of existence before? The Big Bang. The, the character of existence is all infinite. That you're talking about the state of the omnia pre Big Bang. Okay, the state of the omnia pre Big Bang is all potentialities, all infinite possibilities. It actually has no character because it is it is everything and nothing at the same time. It, it it's nothing. It can't be anything until it. It can't be anything until it chooses to be something less than what it was. All right, but it, are, are are you discounting the possibility of of like? Uh, sequential big bangs and big big crunches. The big bangs and big crunches uh, posited, like in multiverse or maybe multiverse theories. I'm talking about, or just the the cycle of the of the big bang to the big crunch. The, the cycle, cloud. yeah. The cycle itself is is the process, the toroidal process of expanding outward, experiencing everything, processing, and then coming back together into cohesion with itself to become uh, fully uh, like 100% omniscient and and. Ev- yeah, all knowing again it's it's just a cyclical process and and that and what's outside of we're in the middle of that process right we're in the middle of it we're experiencing life and death and pain and suffering and and pleasure and joy and we're in the middle of sort of um being in permanent in permanent um aspects of nature we're in permanent aspects of nature uh taking part in the process of nature experiencing everything that's experiencing so the character there is there is every kind of character existent within it and 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 what all I'm saying is, all we can do is extrapolate and say it must have desired to experience this; otherwise, this would not have happened. Logan, do you, do you have any theory of of what um, the universe or reality would have been before the Big Bang? Um, I don't. I tend to entertain the multiverse. I don't have a particular belief in the regards, though. I don't. I just. Tend to lean to- more towards the multiverse, uh, but I, I want to say something. Well, the, the multiverse theory, 
Sorry. Go ahead, WST. Yeah, what? I kind of agree with him on the multiverse thing also. The the multiverse, see, you got to understand, the multiverse is just positive because they they have this infinite uh, re regress and you can't say that it's intelligence or consciousness, so you have to say that something else must have already existed, you know, the bubbles up against each other or <laughs> or like the, one funneling into another one, it's a black a gigantic black hole that the, at the other end of a black hole is another universe. These are all, um, you know, postulate speculations because they're not they're not recognizing what's inherent in all energy matter is that that drive toward consciousness well and Pop, what i'm Pop, saying it's, it seems like the yeah. multiverse on, could exist in a cyclical in other words like potentiality actuality it does, potentiality it does. actuality let me, it does let me let me explain it does it does not in the way that you think though the multiverse okay the multiverse is every time that that the universe does this and it, and it produces a different result. So the multiverse exists because every, every, every experience of every universe is what's, is what's happening. So when it gets to the end and it's, and it's all, it's coherent and it's cohesive again, then it forgets everything and then it becomes another universe. Well, that's, I just kind of want to clarify something though, uh, with the multiverse, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm ruling out, um, the possibility of a, I'm going to call it God, because that's essentially what I feel like we're talking about. Dios, uh, um, Dios, the Theos, God. Dios, Omnia, whatever the heck you want to call it. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not ruling that out. I'm just saying that's an, I entertain the multiverse, hypo, uh, the hypothesis, I guess. Um, but I still enter, I still, uh, admit the fact that it is ontologically possible for there to be some sort of omnia or whatever. Um, I think, I think trick was probably trying to say that as well. I just don't think he was communicating it as effectively. I just want to say it clear cut, uh, just straightforward to the point. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, like whether we see the, the, the reality, um, naturalistically or theistically, we run across the same problem. In other words, like this eternal regress, you know, we can't attribute any fundamental character to it because we can never reach a point in the past that we can, you know, designate as the point at which any quote unquote intent or decision or purpose was ever, you know, um, created because there must have been an eternity before that also. I see it as I see it as an impulse. I see it almost like a heartbeat, like a breath. Like the like the the the, the cycle of, of respiration of breathing, it's like breathing in and breathing out. I see it more like it, it's this is this is what it does. Like it is experiencing everything, and then coming going back into cohesion with itself, and then it and then it it forgets what it is, and then it experiences everything again, and it's gaining knowledge, and it's 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 the whole process of experience. Like you, you keep saying that we're puppets. I mean. That's exactly what it is. We're, we are a gigantic, enormous, in, unfathomable organism that's that's just simply um, breathing. That's how that's how I see it. Just breathing. Would you I, prefer, I prefer the term biological robots uh, over puppets. Just yeah, yeah, no, I know, I hear. You. George <laughs> says puppets. I mean, I don't like to think of myself as a puppet, puppet, but uh, like, uh, well, it's this is all of this. Um, like, it's not that I had like a. It's not that I had like like this ontology or this this whole thing all worked out, and I'm trying to fit reality into it. I'm coming from being like agnostic, and then being a, a scientific pantheist, basically just uh, appreciating, loving nature, feeling that reverence and awe, and feeling connection with the natural world, um, and and seeing it as the highest source of inspiration and the, and the source of all things, the the creative power, the the laws of nature, the forces of nature. Basically, nature is the um, you know, fulfills all the criteria of of uh, of a god, not a personal god, but of a, you know, of a, of something that's divine. And then and then looking at it and realizing that like scientific pantheism, like the world pantheist movement, you know, Paul Harrison, I've met with him, I've talked with him. He doesn't ask these questions. He's not a philosopher. Like he doesn't he doesn't want to even ask what came before the Big Bang or why anything is happening. He just cares about the environment and he just used the pantheistic philosophy. As a way of, um, as a as a basis for environmental ethics, because he I'm wants back. to, you know, help the planet. Welcome back. So I had to feed the cat. What I, what I realized was like no one is asking these questions. And then I I read God's Debris and I came across um, material on, on on pandeism. And actually, I I had this vision before I even discovered pandeism. I, I felt like 
the universe is a cyclical system. It's a torus that is perpetually revolving and collapsing in on itself and expanding and spreading out and then collapsing in on itself. And, and it's for the, for the sake of experience itself. It's for each and every one of us what we're all experiencing from a little, a little ant, a butterfly to a dinosaur to Logan. What we're all experiencing is, is the, the purpose for existence itself, for the purpose of experience. And that information gets passed on and passed on and life continues to evolve. And I see the trajectory that it's all moving toward greater and greater levels of awareness and cohesion. So I, I put it all together that you can't have intelligence coming from non-intelligence. All the potentiality must have already existed in the singularity. So this is where I came up with this model. Um, okay, I guess I guess the question would still remain in terms why it would have to be or necessarily have to be cyclical. Um, I, I, say, again, I say that it's cyclical. I, the reason I think it's cyclical because everything in nature is cyclical. Everything in ah. nature is, is cycles itself, and all fruits and vegetables and plants and animals operate um, on this this toroidal cycle. So I'm 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 looking I'm looking at, at biology. Do you and nature. do you mean like how uh, there's a life? It plants a seed. It that object dies. The seed grows into something yes. else. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. And it, and it produces more seeds and it produces more seeds and then even if it gets completely destroyed, somewhere else something else is producing more seeds and that evolves and and every single living organism basically gives up its own life and reproduces itself so that it can pass on the the information the traits. To the next generation, and that's right. every, and everything about life. Just just apply biology to the universe. That's the way I see it. Right. The why philosophy I, behind why that is it's 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 more logical to speculate um, um, based on how we know things seem to work um, rather than than um, without criteria. That that makes sense. I mean, if you're yeah, if you're saying that. Um, that like with quantum physics and stuff, when you get on a subatomic level, like spooky action at a distance and entanglement and um, uh, or juxt what, what's it called, um, um, superposition and things like that. These things are counterintuitive. They they seem to defy, uh, you know, they're still trying to trying to mesh um, general relativity and quantum mechanics. They they don't they don't jive well with our sense of logic. I am not thinking outside of a logical um, framework. I'm literally just applying. What I see in nature to the universe. No, that's, exactly, that's exactly what yeah. I'm saying. In other words, your yeah. rationale is if, if if that's the way things seem to um, work in nature, it seems logical to use that model to speculate about what we don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm based. I'm, it's a biological uh, model. I'm, that's why it's biopantheism. It's you know, biology comes first. Biology is what binds us. I, I believe that the universe is essentially a gigantic being that's alive. Um, not in intellectually conscious right now, but becoming so through uh, higher organisms, and it's all part of the process of experience. It's for the pro it's for the sake of experience itself. Sounds good, guys. I'm like, <laughs> I think I'm out of steam. What do you, what are you, what, how are you guys feeling? Uh, I feel like we're pretty much uh, at a pass. I think we're pretty good at this point. I think it's <laughs> whatever we wanted to talk about. I think we talked about it. <laughs> Yeah, I just Sounds sit here good. listening. Well, I say a few words, but you know, everybody just kept going. And yeah, it was it was whole, it was passionate. Pantheist thing, I didn't know what to say. I went, well, I understand something. I stay quiet. <laughs> it's it's passionate. I, there was never a point where I'm like angry or, or getting offended about any of this. I mean, it, I'm just I'm very passionate you know, it about passion, it. So but I'm that's just all saying, it is. I'm just saying. I'm just I'm just I just said. And Chandler, when you listen to this, just like you know, like um, uh, just um, add a clip to it, just like end it uh, however you want. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to. Somebody's supposed to sign off. I don't know. What to... Well, not like Chandler can just cut it off, and he can just like add like a, a, oh, okay, a thirty-second okay. clip. Let's no. give it. Let's give him a pause, and then he'll so he'll, he'll add it in there. Okay. All right, guys. I right. I'm like really really <laughs> tired. This has been excellent. All right. Yeah. Great talk. Great safe. talking to you, George. Great. Right. Yep. Okay. See you, Logan. See you. Yep. Everybody, stay safe. That's watching the podcast. Also. Thanks. You too. Yep. Take care. Be well. Thanks. Hello, this is Chandler Klebs here, and I just finished listening to the whole recording of this podcast and all the stuff that I missed while I was taking a shower, eating all that fun stuff I had to do before bed last night. And I just now got through it all, and man, was that some crazy stuff. 
I was like, what didn't they talk about? And um, I'm sure that there's some things I would have liked to say that I didn't really get a chance. I still think we need to clarify that things can happen that are not intended, but that accidents and mistakes happen. I don't necessarily agree with George or Poffo that everything it is intended by something, but it does causally happen. But that's something that we can revisit in future shows. Um, this was one of our longest episodes ever. And because there was such a huge crowd, you got to hear a lot of different perspectives. So um, I hope that that was exciting. Um, it, was, it was very entertaining for me to listen to and probably for you. And hopefully there's something educational and useful to our lives as well. Although some of it I'm not so sure like about gravity wanting rocks to fall and rocks wanting to be rocks because, I mean, how do we know a rock doesn't want to be a pink fluffy unicorn dancing on a rainbow? But it's a rock regardless of what it wants or doesn't want. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think my brain's fried after all that I listened to. But anyway, I love my crazy co-hosts. They're a lot of fun. So anyway, this has been the Free Will Science and Religion Podcast. Thank you for listening and goodbye.